We're over to Shara and Yuri Prohashka. So, J.A., well, this is interesting. We don't get to do this It's very nice, often. and I never get to sit next to Daniel anymore because there's always somebody between us. He cares more about the Telestrator than his old man. So, <laughs> But it's good to be with you guys. It's nice to be on set. We can swear. We can drink coffee. This is very I interesting. Like it, right? I could have a beer on this show, and I'm very offended that we I don't can. have one in my hand. We will make that happen for you. So, no more sleeps, but did you sleep? Well, one more. Well... Well, okay. Maybe right. two. Oh, yeah, maybe two more. I have steps. no idea what time it is. Yeah, I'm being honest. Dunk. But what you say that that's a trademark thing now. You probably owe Annex some money by well, saying two more sleeves. Trademark has been filed. Been right. We haven't been approved yet. Trademark's been filed though. Be careful out there. <laughs> I see you got a little golfing as well. Did I see? Were you golfing in the rain? I thought you said, "Do I have a new girlfriend?" Oh, uh, don't say that. Have don't we got language. Have we got language barriers already. What goes on in Singapore stays in Singapore. <laughs> this is yes. live, right? We did go golfing. I had never done the nocturnal golf before. It was very exciting until the eighth hole when the skies opened up, which was a little bit tricky. You know, we played golf at night, but if you look at the bottom, look at the lower third. That's John Anik. He does not look as cute as his brother. You know, John has a twin. The brother's got the long, flowing hair. This morning, we hit my boy with the big. Look at that. Look at the lower third I got made for you, John. Not as handsome as Come on, guy. now. Right oh. there, John. I, 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 I think most girls historically would agree with that, too. <laughs> he was the more attractive twin. Um, but speaking of which, you know, my clippers, I went to shave my head. They started smoking, so I had to pick the whole thing like my man DC. Like and here we look. are. Thank you, I man. like the Thank look. Thank you. Yeah, because you. you got the same one. That's right. Yeah, you're bold. Just, <laughs> I'm going to bring this back to the fights. Thank just, you. Just for, a, Thank you. just for a moment, just because they're telling me to. Uh, favorite nugget from your research that you can share with us this week, John? Well, I will tell you, and Daniel and Michael can certainly attest to this, I felt like our fighter meetings with both Valentina Shevchenko and Tyler Santos were very telling. Valentina always is managing her energy. Sometimes she gives us less than other times, but this time around, she had a lot to say, and in, in the past, maybe she's been dismissive of the Amanda Nunes trilogy or the Juliana Pena fight. Now she's all in. I mean, she was confidence was dripping off of her, but Tyler Santos is undeterred, right? I mean, she's 19 and one. I think she derives a lot of confidence from just her mixed martial arts body of work, and she's not necessarily going to go in there and throw caution to the wind. I think she's going to feel Valentina out early, and perhaps she'll pay the price for that. But I'm very excited, as I think a lot of the fan base is, to see what Tyler Santos can do with this opportunity. She's ready for it. She's worthy. We'll see what she can do. I love the fight. I'm eating, Sarah. Very private space, and it's, it can get kind of, you know, up close and personal. Yuri Prohashka in the fight. I'm eating. Tell me more. He's a pretty intense individual. Yeah. I don't know that that is any sort of breaking news, but, uh, you know, he bided his time getting to the UFC, not unlike Israel Adesanya. You know, he could have been here earlier. He wanted to make sure when he got to the UFC that he could beat the champion. Now, he was not expectant that he would get a title fight two fights in, uh, but that's not an opportunity that you pass by, and he's ready to seize the moment. And candidly, in his third UFC fight, he's a two-to-one favorite to leave as the UFC light heavyweight champion. So I'm excited to see what he can do. We'll see where the takedown defense is relative to, say, the Dominic Reyes fight, but uh, I'm excited for him. And what was your measurement of motivation for Valentina Shevchenko? She just keeps on winning. And I think you said on the last call, like, who is there for her? Yeah, well, in the past, she's really been focused on adding rubies to the belt, defending this flyweight title, but everything changed in December when Juliana Pena broke through, and that seems to have opened the door for Valentina to have the appetite again to maybe go up to Bantamweight and try to sort of right that wrong against Amanda Nunes, you know, back in 2017. So it's very interesting, especially for me and Danny. We've done a lot of fighter meetings with Valentina, and. She didn't want to talk about Amanda. She didn't want to talk about Juliana Pena. And now she's all in chips in the center of the table. She is. Thank you very much for peeling back the curtain. You have business to do. I'm afraid we have to lose you for now. Have a good one up there. Boom. Thank you, guys. DC, <laughs> let's talk about that main event. That is your wheelhouse, yes. of course. And one thing I've noted from watching the embedded and seeing, uh, seeing Glover around the hotel, he seems a bit more mean. Like last time when he was facing Jan Bohovic, maybe because it was his birthday fight week, yeah. but those face-offs, like he changed, and he looks like he's got a mean streak about him for this one. I don't know if you felt the same way. I kind of feel like, look, when you get that belt and you are the champion, you develop almost a dog with a bone type of attitude where you're like, you're not getting mine. And it feels like Glover is, uh, Checks his phone. <laughs> I mean, I was waiting the, for you to the guy that. like checks his phone 748 times a day. I think that's low. I actually think that's a little low. But can I get back? Can I get back to the analysis? <laughs> can I get back to it? 
as the champion, though, <laughs> you are like, this is mine. It belongs to me. And you almost take it personal that this guy is coming to take what you've worked so hard for. And I think that's what we're seeing from Glover to share. 100%. And to your point, John, saying he's being a little meaner, is because you, he realizes Yuri is a real threat. You know, the man has real knockout power. Yeah. And you work so hard to become champion of the world. And here you are, you just get the thing and then you go up against this guy. He's unorthodox, he's got crazy knockout power, he's unique. You know, he's got a funky hairstyle and he might come and knock you out. So therefore, it brings out that dog in you, you know? You gotta fight fire with fire. And the man can elbow. I mean, look at that knockout. Absolutely spectacular. And not only that, I mean, he doesn't want to have this belt taken off him by this young buck, right? He has been there, he has done that. He's seen it all inside of the octagon. For Yuri Prohoshka, two fights into his UFC career, that's not the guy that Glover Teixeira wants to give up a championship belt to. I'm very excited to see what Yuri Prohoshka brings in this fight, but the fact is, I mean, we really don't, unless you've been watching Ryzen, we don't know a lot about his game. Yeah, good point. I'm sure we're going to get into it a little bit more, and of course, I think Glover Teixeira will be joining us at some point, but Laura, let's talk about Shevchenko versus Santos, like four-fight win streak for Talia. She's getting better and better, more efficient as well all the time, but she's facing the greatest female fighter there is right now. Like, how do you think one prepares for just the mystique that goes with someone like Valentina. You cannot allow the psychological game to take over what skill set you know that you bring to the table. The fact is that Tyla Santos has knocked out 10 women in her, in her run up to this moment. She has the frame, she has the physicality, she has the Muay Thai skills, and it's really just, I think it's just about self-belief. You can't allow the specter of someone's greatness to become part of who they are as a human being inside the octagon. She is flesh and bone, is Valentina. We've seen her in a couple of tough spots, but the reality is she's so good, she's so close to perfect, that it does get difficult to, to, to look at paths to victory. Can I, I used to peddle the notion that John Jones had like a voodoo and a mystique. Did, did you feel that when you were going up against John Jones? Because everyone you would build him up in such a way. That's a little out of line, but man. No, 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 I should have bring that into DC. No, it's, come it's on, truth, right? come because on. I've experienced it. You've, I've experienced dealing with the person that it felt like uh, the whole world held up on such a pedestal. A pedestal. But for a, a, a true competitor, it doesn't deter you. It only motivates you more because I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I've never been more prepared. Right. So even if you don't get it done, you're never more prepared. So what I feel we'll see from Tyler Santos is for as good as she's been, she'll be better on Sunday or Saturday night. But will that be enough to beat Valentina? And you, you dealt with Anderson, with Anderson too. Yeah, Same yeah. type of thing, right? Dealing with those things only motivates the truly, truly special. And I believe that Tyler Santos is going to try to step up to that level. Oh, of course she is. And listen, for Shevchenko, you've got to be careful. Every time she's going out there, this is her seventh world title defense. You're fighting the number one contender every single time. And you've got to be perfect in these situations. And just by odds, by numbers, people make mistakes sometimes. If you zig when you should have zagged, you bob when you should have weaved, you danced when you should have <laughs> sprawled or whatever it is, you make a mistake, you lose your belt. That is a lot of pressure. And Tyler Santos coming into this one, this is her shot, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying that Valentina has rested on her laurels because of course she's a great champion and she wouldn't do that. But you do start to get confident, to get a little complacent perhaps because we are only human beings. And when you start wiping the floor with everybody, maybe you don't put the, uh, the what do you Americans pedal to the say? Metal? The pedal to the metal. I <laughs> might make the argument that Valentina, if you're talking about, you know, we're all human, she's as close to being a superhuman. A, thank you, a cyborg. That's a great term. I see a focus in her, Michael. I mean, and I think it comes from over 20 years of doing martial arts. I, this to her is 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 beyond. Oh yeah. I, 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 by the way, I didn't pick up on that at all. When I spoke to her yesterday, she seemed dialed in, focused. Very you know, much so. Oh, 100%. She hasn't rested on her lows. She yeah. hasn't got complacent. Well, I I'm just her. saying, human nature, like, though, hey, you can't. I asked her, I said, how do you stay motivated, right? Whenever what you have done has been so spectacular. And I, I, I think the, the motivation and what speaks to her focus was against uh, Lauren Murphy right where the threat may not be as apparent. She understands the threat in Tyler Santos. And because of that, I think motivation is not really an issue for Valentina. <coughs> also, the options that she has out in front of her.
Nice. Because even though, like John said earlier, she hasn't really spoken about going up and fighting at 135, but really, Dana hasn't been that open to her going up and scheduling her and Amanda again. Now, he's openly said she does whatever she wants. So it's all on the table for Valentina. This would be a terrible time to make a mistake. All right, we have another <clears throat> massive female fighter as well, Michael. Joanna Jongjocek and Zhang Weili. It's hard to critique that fight. It was so, epic, so epic, but if you're in Joanna's corner, like what, what does she do or what does she need to do differently to get the W this time? Yeah, well, she even talked about it herself yesterday. She needs to, this time, try and maintain range a little bit, not stand in the pocket and throw down and brawl and throw caution to the wind. However, that's probably what's going to happen. If you take two dogs, two pit bulls, you lock them in a cage together, what's going to happen? They're going to go to war. You know. Now, I'm not saying that they are dogs. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's a bad <laughs> comparison, perhaps. But it's within their DNA. That's who they are. That's the way that they fight. And you lock them in a cage, which is what's going to happen over there on Sunday morning. That's what's going to happen again. They're going to go to war. And yeah, you're going to stay away. You're going to use the jab. You're going to use your kicks. Try and use the that, footwork. One, I think but until you get clipped and then you say, you know what, let's go. I think that's one of the things she actually has to do away with. That front kick got her in a lot of trouble in fight number one, Laura. It did. That first fight was absolutely insane. The damage that those two inflicted on each other was wild. And from the very, I mean, from the bell, I think people realized that this was a fight that was going to live in history. But to your point, Michael in D.C., you wanted did a much better job early in the fight of maintaining that distance, uh, allowing herself to be a little bit more of, of a counter striker. But when, when Zhang Wei Li started to find her range, started to engage in those those grappling situations a little bit catching those kicks to your point dc that's where you started to see the tables turn a very close fight though and man the reaction to people in that arena after that fight i've never seen anything like it everybody knew that they were witnessing history there it, it was absolutely tremendous and it was an honor to call that fight because you saw on that night two women take each other to the next level but you always question after a fight like that how do you recover? Are you the same athlete after you go through what those two went through on that night? Zhang Wei Li has struggled since. She has lost a couple fights since that fight. We have not seen Joanna. How does Joanna return to the octagon after the time away? The fight is going to be fantastic. I just would say temper expectations a little bit because very rarely does the sequel live up to what the original was. I don't know. Real quick. In that moment, at that first fight, did you know it was that epic, like the best ever? It was happening in that moment. You could tell okay. something special was going on. Nice. OK, thank you, DC. Right, time now to get over to friend of the show and MC for the official weigh-ins. Here is John Annett. Miles. What's going on, Singapore? Thank you all for coming out to the weigh-in for UFC 275. Our Octagon girls, Camila, Red, Christy, Carly, Kahili is here as well. Our handsome matchmaker, Mick Maynard, Dave Shaw pulling up the rear, and we are ready to go. 11 fights coming your way at UFC 275. Teixeira versus Prohaska. And we begin with a prelim on Fight Pass and ESPN Plus in the women's featherweight division. Ramona Pasquale versus Jocelyn Edwards. First fighter to the scale, Jocelyn Edwards. Here we have Jocelyn Edwards, the first ever fighter representing Panama in the UFC. Now she's coming off a couple of bumps. Uh, lastly, One, to two, Jessica three. Rose Clark, but listen, she has been putting in the work at King's MMA. And of note, of course, is the fact that this fight is actually at featherweight, originally scheduled to be at bantamweight. I understand that that was sort of renegotiated a couple weeks out. Jocelyn Edwards gets to keep a little bit more of the purse than she had in initially uh, planned on. So a little bit more money in the bank there for Jocelyn Edwards. Let's see, uh, let's see what she weighs in on. One forty-five, the official weight for Jocelyn Edwards. And I understand she was wearing, uh, eating breakfast her this morning. Is so Ramona pretty, pretty easy weight there for her. Here she is, Ramona Pascal walking out. This is her second fight in the UFC. First one, she had a tough fight out at one forty-five. So today, making her bantamweight debut in the UFC. She said she feels like the weight's going to be pretty easy. Of course, we don't know that. 
and took the steps up to the scale. But she certainly seems, you know, a, a little uh, more toned, shall we say, trying to find the right words there. But let's let's wait and see. One forty-five, the official weight for Ramona Pasquale. Some intensity on that stare down right there. Yeah, look at that. This is going to be a good one. Justin Edwards is a lot of fun to watch. This All right, next up fun. in the UFC strawweight division, the Dragon Girl, Leon Na versus Silvana Gomez Juarez. Proudly representing Argentina, Silvana Gomez Juarez trains out of Entram Gym in Mexico. Uh, Definitely determined to fight her footing here in the UFC. She's got a couple of bumps in the road via arm bar. She's got to be very careful of these grappling exchanges. But, you know, she has been fighting a UFC caliber of opponent for a very long time. She met with Vanessa Mello, Poliana Botelio, Ariana Lipsky, all before even making it to the UFC octagon. Let's see what she weighs here. 116, the official weight for Silvana Gomez Juarez. On the dot for Silvana. And her opponent, please welcome Leon Na. Here you got Leon Na. Now listen, when Leon Na is fighting her style, she can get takedown. She is very, very aggressive in her approach. She wants to get the fight to the ground, and at times, she can be a bit desperate to get the fight to the ground. It's very well documented how many women look up to Ronda Rousey and all the armbar finishes she has speaks to her trying to replicate what Ronda did in the octagon. Official weight, 116 pounds for Leon Na. Yeah, well, if you're Na, you are drilling armbars for sure because yeah. Gomez oh. was, oh my word, she needs to work on those armbar defenses. Well, and, and, and Leon Na has six finishes yeah. by armbar, so. All right, next fight, to kicking off the late prelims live on ESPN2 in the Bantamweight division. Kyung Ho Kong versus Bot Gary Dana. First fighter to the scale, Bot Gary Dana. You know, Bot Gary Dana is a guy that had put some fights and some wins together, but then he got beat by Chris Gutierrez in his last fight. And when you lose a fight, guys, it can really set you back. But Gutierrez was so emotional after the fight. His mom was dealing with cancer and he won the fight in Bacarigo. You know what? My opponent needed it more than I did. He understood. He understood that all the things that the Gutierrez family was going through was more important and that the win meant more to them. Now, did it soften the blow a bit? Yes. But every loss still sticks with you. So Bacari said that all the mistakes he made in that fight, he intends to make sure he doesn't make them again in the fight tomorrow night. 135, the official weight for Bot Gary Dana. And his opponent, Mr. Perfect, Jung Ho Kong. Gotta love that fight name, Mr. Perfect, Jung Ho Kang. This is his 11th fight in the UFC. He's been in the UFC since 2013, had to go on military duty in 2015. And an interesting one here, he just cut off all of his hair. I hope that he doesn't suffer like Samsung and lose all of his power. <laughs> Stepping up to the scales now. Official weight 136. 136. For Loves the submission, triangles, arm bars, rear naked chokes out of a very established team, the Team Mad in South Korea as well. We've been watching these Korean fighters on road to UFC this week. All right, next comes your way in the middleweight division. Brendan All in Allen versus Jacob Mamba Malkoon. First fighter to the scale, rep in Sydney, Australia, Jacob Malkoon. You know, Jacob Malkoon really suffered in his UFC debut against Phil Hawes. He got knocked out quick and said, Guys, this is not me. Me and this guy, Jacob, have been going back and forth about playing NBA 2K for a very long time. And he was telling me over the game, look, I'm much better. Well, he has shown that in his last couple of appearances. He is an absolute grinder. You see Robert Whitaker up there with him, the former champion. Jacob Malkoon, if he can make the fight look the way that he wants, dirty, gritty, and ugly, can win against just about anybody in this division. 
186, the official weight for Jacob Malku. And his opponent repping the United States of America, Brendan Allen. Oh, look at that hat. I don't even know what that's about, but I like it. I love me some Brendan Allen. Every time he fights, I get so excited. He's won three of his last four, and he's coming off that round two rear naked choke of Sam Alvey. Just sort of casually wandered up to a light heavyweight just for the heck of it. Turned out well for him. Very busy week as well as he cornered one of the uh, road to UFC fighters that you see there, as well as cornering another fighter on this card, Andre Fialu. He's going to corner him after he fights. Yeah. 186 for Brendan Allen. Brendan asked me the other day on his way out of the fight, and he goes, DC, when are you going to come home? When you move back to Louisiana, I go, listen, man, I love Louisiana. But being here this week in the humidity, thinking about <laughs> going back home and living it's in that swampy. humidity. It's oh swampy. It is swampy. It is rough down there. Hot. I want to know what this hat is all about. I got to ask him. It's a bit of grappling. It's like a rack of light between these two. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe he maybe killed it hunting. <laughs> People back home would wear stuff like that. When they kill it, they make hats and stuff. He's an old country boy. Welcome uh -huh. on now to the lightweight Mahashata versus Steve Mean Machine Garcia. First fighter to the scale is Steve Garcia. You know, Steve Garcia is fun. And in the fighter meeting the other day, he was talking about his approach and how much safer he's going to be because Mike goes, man, you got to watch that chin, right? He's he goes, right. I don't get hurt all the time, but he's fun. He fun. does. Hey, <laughs> fun is a way of not saying wild. Right, because he is a bit wild. No, he's wild. He's That's wild, good. and it's a fun style of fighting. But he said as he's up at 155 now, we can expect him to be a little bit smarter in the way that he approaches the fight. Uh, is it tomorrow night or tomorrow morning? It's Sunday morning, bro. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. 155 well, and a half the right. official weight for me. I was the in the gym earlier. And his opponent set to make the UFC debut here Sunday morning. Marina, and he was shot. And today's Friday. Today's Friday night, yeah. <laughs> Here is Mahashata, first ever Chinese fighter to win a contract on Dana White's Contender Series, making his UFC debut this weekend, come in on a six-fight win streak. And let me tell you something, he really, really impressed on the Contender Series. He was taking on an undefeated fighter in an Achilles Estremadura, was a massive underdog, came out with the win and the contract. This is a big moment for all of China. 155 and a half as well for Mahashata. You know what's something that we really should mention is like these weigh-ins are happening right now. So Yeah, this is different yeah, than a normal weigh-in show. Yep. They're grabbing, they're grabbing the, the fluids right away because they're still depleted. But now that Michael mentioned the fight until Sunday morning, right, now we get to the they have more time. They're about in the featherweight so division. Some right? Wu Choi oh. versus Josh Kulabao. From the weight fighter to the scale. Josh Kuya Kulabau. This kid is always smiling. I love me some Josh Kulabau from Sydney. Caught up with his coach earlier this week. They put him on a really decent strength and conditioning program. Another thing that I noted as well, this guy goes out to help Alexander Volkanovsky in his camp. And he's a very popular dude back in Australia, so he's getting a lot of guys repay the favor. And they come through Sydney, give him some really good sparring. He and his coach have had a little bit of tenseness, though, this week, because the rugby league went down back in Sydney, a huge deal in Australia. I'm not sure whose team won. I don't think it was Kulabau's, but it's still smiling. The official weight for Josh Kulabau. 146 for Josh. And his opponent, Sting Song Wu Choi. Well, as you said, Kulabau's always smiling. He might not be smiling, but Song Wu Choi tees off on him. But let me tell you, the striking on this kid it's beautiful. Love watching it. Very fast, beautiful job. Powerful hands. I mean, look at the fight he had with Julian Arosa. First round knockout. Huge left hook. Sits him down, follows it up. No doubt looking to replicate that performance. And that, John Gooden, is exactly what I look like if I take my shirt off right now. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Like All of us, right? I can yeah. attest to that. I, earlier when you were taking your shirt off. Yeah, and exactly. Again, again we Mirror image. Ah. Gotta be careful. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm in that dressing room and I'm taking my shirt off. You better not walk up in there. I mean, look at that six-pack. Well, I've six. never looked like that in my life. I, okay, I did. I looked like that at one point. I saw you, the young DC, when you were wrestling. 
you were, you were jacked. Not like this. I never, I never had that six pack. You were right, Hold up, guys. So he's got to dress himself before he has a stare down. Well, if I was, if I looked like that, I would never wear. Oh, he's there. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. Oh, like, hold up, bro. I'm waiting for you for this. I'm waiting for this. There's something to want back in his mouth. Oh, yeah. Hey, something moved, though. He's fired up. All right, now we get to the main call live on pay-per-view. First up in the welterweight division, Jack Della Maddalena versus Ramazan Ami. First fighter to the scale, Ramazan Ami. Let me, you know, Ramazan Ami is a guy that he wants to kind of slow the fight down a little bit. If the fight is at a more leisurely pace, Ramazan Amiv is being successful because that means he's scoring takedowns. But I tell you, he is training uh, with Rashid Magomedov, Nadir Murad Antigulov, Magomed Ankalaev, this team. 171, the official wave for Ramazan Amiv. they have out in Dagestan. It's tremendous. And his opponent so repping first in Western Australia. You gotta make sure Jack you're paying attention to the board. Delamadalena! You guys are good. Listen to the kid for this guy, Jai Delamadalena. I'm telling you, this guy is a star in the making. Beautiful boxing. I love the way he fights. A lot of pressure coming into this one, opening up the pay-per-view. And his second fight since he qualified from the contender. Looks good in the contender. Got a knockout in the first round in his debut. One second and a half the official for wait for Jack Della Madalena. Looks the part as well with that nose, doesn't he? Oh, don't, yeah. Don't he's, uh, to be proud. He's don't don't proud. Island, yeah. Just twice. He's the man. I, you know, and Madalena has a tailor-made matchup in the first fight. Right, next fight also in the welterweight division. We'll, we'll this one just elevated the pay-per-view yeah, on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Andre Fialio versus the Celtic kid, Jake Matthews. First fighter to the scale, another Aussie, Jake Matthews. Jake Matthews feels disrespected, and he should feel disrespected, because Jake Matthews has been here before. Jake Matthews was the young guy with all the hype. Jake Matthews has a well-rounded skill set, and he promises to show improved boxing this weekend. And you will all remember why he was who we thought he was. He's going to remind us who he is today. A much better version than we have seen. 170 and a half. The official weight for the Celtic kid, Jake Matthews. Inside the octagon. And his opponent set to make his fourth here's UFC the appearance of the Jake Matthews. Andre Fialio. It's because his opponent, Andre Fialio, has looked so good. Since he lost his UFC debut, but even in the UFC debut, he fought pretty good. He did a good job even though he lost the fight. He took on a very a, a very tough opponent in short notice. But ever since then, he has been scorching and scorching the opposition and intends to do the same thing to Matthews on Sunday morning. 170 and a half, the official weight yeah, for this is Andre Fialio. Both guys have a lot of intensity. Both got great striking, knockout power. And a new hairstyle for Jay Matthews. Just for the record, for those of you at home, I think you will be watching it on Saturday night, but we keep referencing it's a super yeah, early call for us right. here yes. on Sunday right, morning. Just to a featured belt in the UFC's strawweight division, a rematch of former champions, Magnum Zhang Weili versus Joanna Yeong Chaichek. First fighter to the scale, the former UFC strawweight champion. Welcome back, Joanna Yeong Chaichek. Listen to the crowd. The strawweight queen is back. And I love watching this lady fight. Ever since she came to the UFC, providing nothing but excitement. Fights the same way all the time. Tremendous output, amazing striking. Confidence through the roof. And this rematch, we already know is going to deliver. But look at Joanna, cool as a cucumber. Playing it up to the fans, smile on her face, and rightly so. What a career she has had, and she knows. She gets a win Saturday night. She's got a tile fire in her hands, not only the strawweight queen, but the strawweight champion, potentially, if she can get the job done. Well, especially with Carla being the champ, with the way that she did oh. last night. If she is on fire thinking that she could potentially fight for that belt against the spark. 116, the official weight for Joanna Yeltsin. A very rare three-round fight for Joanna and a very good point. John Wayne. Both the of them former UFC are used to champion five round and fight. the number two ranked contender, Magnum Joe Wayne. Magnum over three. 
Now, I have gone on record when I speak of Zhang Wei Li. Tremendous athlete. Honestly, the most athletically gifted fighter in the female division. I understand we have Valentina, but you I believe the best athlete ever. I believe, I believe, Zhang Wei Li, with her ability to do everything in you our said sport and outside. the best athlete of all time. Come in cheek. You I say the best I athlete of all time. time. 116 for Zhang you know Wei Li. 116 for Zhang Wei Li. But hold on, here we go, here but, we go. Let's take a look at this. This will tell us what we need to know right here. Wait for the intensity. But Wait. saying that Zhang's always so cool. She is. She plays She's you down. She's really cool. But, but Joanna, not so much. You want us to tone it down a little bit this she time, She has, though. actually. But she's going to get right up in her face. But I'm telling you, man, this matchup Hold on. is tremendous. Oh, they got respect. All right, now it is time to take a closer look at the first of two title fights coming your way live Saturday night on pay-per-view. I'm evolving like all the time. From fight to fight, every time picking something like new for me, something would make me better fighter. Here she is, folks, the future UFC Hall of Famer. Since moving to flyweight, this division has been hers. She has six consecutive successful title defenses. Kyrgyzstan's Valentina Shevchenko. I don't want to put numbers like a goals. This is what I want, like 10 time defense, 12 time defense. I want to discover what is my limit as a martial artist. What is my limit as a human? She's setting the bar for the sport. She's showing women, this is where you gotta be. This is how good you have to be. So dominant, one of the most efficient assassins we've ever seen inside the octagon. I'm here to fight. I'm here to perform my art. Oh! And still the undisputed best in the world. I just keep going, never stopping. Is there anyone who has anything for her at 125? Vai ser você a lutadora que vai destronar a Valentina? Vai ser eu sim. E chegou o meu momento. Say hello to Flyweight's newest contender, Brazil's Tyler Santos. Que não é por acaso que chegou essa oportunidade. E eu cheguei agora para lutar com a melhor e se tornar a melhor. She is so physically gifted. She is so well rounded. She can grapple with the best grapplers. She can piece you up from the feet. She is just one of the brightest prospects we have in the division. Não vou entrar com agressividade. E eu vou buscar o nocaute ou finalização. Oh, big right. What is down? Santos trying to hammer away. Oh, she's going to catch the choke here. There's the tap. Tyla Santos is 19 and 1. She has good grappling, stand up, ground, but I'm better. I won't give her any opportunity to do her game. It's going to be just my game entire time. Oh, huge crowd strikes. That'll do it. Get her another ruby for the belt. Com certeza ela é dura, né? Mas no chão eu já vi algumas falhas na trocação também. Não é invencível. Ela também cansa, ela também sente dor, também é humano. Oh, knock down for Santos. Vai ser uma luta dura, eu sei, sangrenta, mas eu vejo meu braço erguido. Com certeza. Se você não vem pro Brasil. No matter what I have to do, I will do. I will look for my moment, and I will finish here. First fighter to the scale, the challenger, and the number four ranked flyweight contender, Tyla Santos. Tyla Santos coming in here. I mean, there's a lot of pressure, but it almost makes it even sweeter, because if she can be the one to dethrone Valentina Shevchenko, what an accomplishment that is. I said to her yesterday, do you really believe that you can beat her? Yeah. And 100% she does. She absolutely does. And honestly, I believe it's the size of Santo. She's big. She's physical. She's gifted. And she has a belief about herself. 
125, the official weight for Tyler Santos. That she can beat Valentina. If you look at her, she doesn't look and too And her opponent is she the reigning defending undisputed she is UFC awesome, flyweight man. champion Valentina Solenshenko. This lady's ability to lock in is second to none. Her ability to implement a game plan and stay focused, never seen anything like it before, Laura. She has sat on top of the women's flyweight division for so long. She has been head and shoulders above all of the challenges that have attempted to dethrone her. But this is the time, DC, I really do feel that Tyler Santos has an air about her where she is a truly worthy challenger. But Valentina Shevchenko, when you hear her talk about she wants to find her limit, I mean, that's a real martial artist. She wants to know what her absolute limit is. 24 and a half, the official weight for the champ, Valentina Shevchenko. But like you said, Laura, her limit. weight as well. But her limit, like what's her limit? Yeah, but look at this. <laughs> look, at, look at Tyla. Tyla's right in her face. Love this. All right, we step over here and talk to the flyweight title challenger, Tyler Santos. Congratulations on earning this title fight. What are your emotions on the eve, or so to speak, on the biggest fight of your life? As vésperas, talvez essa ser a maior a maior luta da tua carreira. Qual o teu sentimento nesse momento? É, de felicidade, é, de trabalho realizado, concretização de um sonho. Happy to be here. The realization of work well done and a, a dream come true. Congratulations, Boanoich. Wish you all the best here on Sunday morning. Tyler Santos, folks. And we step over here and talk to the otherworldly champion, Valentina Shevchenko. A lot of people, of course, have come out to see you this week. Any final message for your adoring fans on the eve of another big championship fight for you? Feel strong, confident, very, very strong. No matter who, no matter where and when, keep breaking them all. I'm on a mission. Let's do it. There she is, folks, the champion, Valentina Shevchenko. All right, that is one of two title fights coming your way. Now we look at the two light heavyweights, the men on the marquee, who will share the octagon at our UFC 275 main event. Take a look. Say hello again to Yuri Prohaska. He waited patiently to come to the UFC until he believed that he truly could compete at the top. This man is dangerous, make no mistake. In his UFC debut against Hadley Challenger, both news to me. When the time was right, he struck hard. Oh, oh there it is, Yuri wow. Prohaska! Welcome to the big show! And he knocked out Vulcan in the second round. And if he can follow that up tonight against title challenger Dominic Reyes, I mean, this man is on a fast track to challenging for the belt. I want uh, to take a title, and that's all. That's my mission. That's my mission here. So let's go. Covered in blood right now. Bahaska senses it. He knows. Oh, oh my God. God. Whoa. Yuri Prohaska's for real, ladies and gentlemen. Dana White had already stated that the winner of this fight would be next in line for the title. Making the walk for his 40th professional mixed martial arts fight. None bigger than this one. Enter the number one ranked UFC light heavyweight contender, Glover Teixeira, celebrated birthday number 42 on Thursday. I've been visualizing this for 20 years. 2002, I did my debut. That's it! It is all over! I was dreaming I'm gonna be UFC champion. When I fought with John Jones, I lost the title. Then I lost the next fight. And you know, always after losses come the doubts, the demons in your head, and you know, not good enough. But I had a strong mind and a strong heart. We're not, it's not over yet. I'm gonna, I know, I don't care, I'm still going. Robertson taps. I'm gonna be one day UFC champion. Mercifully, it's over. 
Another one bites the dust. Five in a row. He's the number one contender. Because uh, I'm the best. I'm the best in the world. Oh, Glover Teixeira's got him flattened out. Oh, he's attacked his neck. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Teixeira breaks through at 42. Wow. He's the undisputed light heavyweight champion. Oh, my goodness. He did it. He actually did it. 20 years, baby. And I'm breaking the rules, 42 years old. And I'm going to keep breaking those rules. Come up here, buddy, you next. Amazing, amazing performance from Glover. He showed that why he is the champ. But uh, UFC 275, that will be my night. It's my destiny. To be the champ and to stay there as a champ. I want to show the beauty of my kind of martial arts. I'm ready for him. I'm ready for him and I will show my best and I will win. I'm gonna go after this guy with everything that I got. It's going to be a war. And still. First fighter to the scale, the challenger, and the number two ranked light heavyweight contender, repping the Czech Republic, Giri Prohanska. All right, this guy here, I mean, what an opportunity that he has on Saturday night. I mean, the knockout power is what's going to do it. If he can get the job done, it's going to be via knockout. He's going to keep the fight on the feet, defend the takedown, and go to work with the strikes because his striking is very unorthodox, but it's very effective. Hold on, let's take a listen. Official weight for Yuri Prohaska. I mean, this guy really is a traditional martial artist. And his opponent, of course, is the reigning, the defending, undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion out of Minas Gerais, Brazil, to see. Glover Teixeira. You know, and he, you hear the ovation for Glover. And when you look at that clip of him winning the belt, everybody's so excited for him because he's one of the best people in the game. Very rarely is it universal that everyone is Happy for someone's success. Glover deserves and has earned everything, but he has got to get this fight to the ground and get it down early if he wants to retain the championship. 205, the official weight for the champion, Glover Teixeira. He can't have happened what has happened recently where he gets hurt early. Because if this kid hurts him, I don't know if he survives long enough to take over and break guys like he did against Anthony Smith. And like he did against Thiago Santos, he cannot take the damage early. This for Hodgkin's big for the weight, man. Yeah, six foot three. All right, we first step over here and talk to the challenger, Yuri Prohaska. I know you got a lot of emotions going on right now. Final thoughts here before your first UFC championship opportunity. It's great. It's great. I feel great. Feel pre feel prepared. And, and now it is, now it is here, and I'm prepared to show it. Can't wait to see it sleep well, Yuri Prohaska. And here he is, folks, the champion, Glover Teixeira. A lot of love for you in this building, and of course, all over the world. Any final thoughts before your first title defense on Sunday? You know, me and my wife are ready for war. Tomorrow's gonna be war in the octagon, and I'm ready. She's not gonna take my belt, man. Can't wait to see it play out. How about it? The champ, Glover Teixeira. Singapore, can't thank you all for coming out. First fight, 7 a.m. Sunday morning. We will have a Q&A on this stage here shortly with the former UFC light heavyweight champ, Jan Bohovic, and former champion, Robert Whittaker, as well. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Thank you all for coming out. Shut up. This is and he wants to prove everybody wrong. He hears the doubt. People don't realize the amount of confidence it takes to step into the octagon. You know, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So self-belief is huge in a fight game. 
that I spend more than half my time wearing workout clothes. So wearing the Venom gear is huge. The gear is durable and most importantly makes me feel confident every time I'm in there ready to get to work. Glover Teixeira at 42 years of age. What a journey this man has gone on. Glover was at one point thought of as the great knockout artist. But now he's been dominating people with the wrestling. So as he continues to evolve at 42, this is inspirational. The most decorated finisher in the history of the light heavyweight division. And finally, he is one win away from UFC gold and glory. Oh! Oh, he heard him. Glover crushed him with that. Oh, it's the tap, it's the tap. Oh, my God. Oh, there's the tap. Glover to share a great In your dreams. Now, Yuri Perhotchka, is that who you anticipate sharing the octagon with next? He's the next one. Who you next? The Czech Republic's Yuri Prohaska. This guy is a huge injection of talent into this division. The size, the skill of the man, the ferocity. He's on a fast track to challenging for the belt. This guy is going to be a huge problem. Oh, oh, wow! Prohaska's for real. I feel invisible. Nothing can touch me. It's going to be a war. I'm coming home with the bell. This is my house. I love this. I'm keeping the bell. Glover Teixeira. It's going to be a brutal fight, but I see a finish. I'm going after it with everything I got. Gary Prohaska. He's here to take over. It's my destiny to be the champ and to stay champ. The greatest flyweight champion in UFC history, Valentina Shevchenko. She is a straight-up assassin. Tyler Santos, flyweight's newest contender. One of the most epic fights in the history of the UFC. The rematch you have all been waiting for. Zhang Wei Li, Joanna Yin Jacek will run it back. Oh my goodness, this is so crazy. The UFC is going to Singapore. This card stacked from top to bottom. I cannot wait. Welcome back to the set. So the weigh-ins have gone off without any issue at all. So John Gooden, Michael Bisping, DC, Laura, we're about to have some fun, right? Battle defense time. We got we got a little fun in a, a sh in a little thing we're going to call. Oh, here we go. Look, he Who's wears older? bow ties in bed. Look at that. <laughs> I, that that sounds right. Like he wears his bow ties to bed. I believe that. I'm certain he does. I Who's been that. watching? I am certain he does. Who's been watching again? <laughs> hey, you got those pictures too? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is how it's going to work. Very simple. I'm really just going to ask, who is older? You guys are going to write it down. I'll reveal the answer. And then the cumulative winner gets the belt and then picks someone to spin this here wheel. Are you ready? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You sure? I'm ready. Well, oh, this is DC. I'm ready. Here we go. Right, so. You're not ready. Grover Teixeira is 42 years old, only eclipsed by Randy Couture as the oldest champ in UFC history, doing it at 43. So, folks, that begs the question hold up, hold up. Who is older? I'm just setting it up. Right? Are you I'm building about us? this. I'm building it up. Here's yeah. the first fighters. one. Who is older? Grover Teixeira or Anderson Silva? Oh, sorry, they're giving me George Set. There's a lot of confusion. Come on, John. Oh, There's a get lot of confusion. Oh, my goodness. I know, I know, I know. I know. to share it or George St. Pierre. I mean, come on. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Do we even need to say? Well, who, who do you have? We got to all flip at the same time. Because he's still sure. riding. All right. Well, well, all right. well, well. Let's go. Okay, flip him up. Glover. Silver Glover. Well, Sorry, saying. yes, that was my fault. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's right. Well done, everybody. It's well the done. silver glove. Okay. Yes. Wipe those boards down. And thank you for your instructions. Keep okay. me good yes, on this. Yes, yeah, yes. I, I appreciate you. Okay, Dan Helly or Dean Thomas? Oh, that's Ooh. a tricky one. Did it, did it, did it, did it. I'm not sure about Dean. Four, three, two, one. Flip them. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you, Dan Helly is 47. Yep, yep. I know the Hellcat. That's he one of my boys right look, there. I just thought, you know. Next oh, one, then, the next one. Michael Bisping or Uriah Faber? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know who's better looking, though. <laughs> it's, 
Let's just say it's very, very close. I'm sure it is. Very close. But, um, right. Wait, in terms of who's good looking? Yeah, I yeah ready, 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 five, I'm more four, three, two, one. It is Michael Bisping by three months. Oh, Jesus. I thought it was Faber a little bit because Faber was in college a little earlier than I was. Okay. Right, next up. Zhang Wei Li or Joanna Yong Zhejek? I don't know about this. This is a total guess. But. Oh, wait, no. Five. Bro, well, come on, four, yeah, let's go. Uh, three, two, one, flip them. Biggity bing. Dang Correct. Yay! I it <laughs> the last second. Oh, <laughs> three, oh no, Mike missed one. Mike missed one. No. You, oh, yeah, we all missed one. Yes. One. Come on. He's now. Seen it's some cheating. All right. Yeah. Hey, hey, we'll, we'll do the officiating over here. Thank yeah. you very much. Right. Daniel DC Cormier or Tom Brady? Ooh. Jeez Louise. Y'all better be careful here. I like the change in music. Y'all yeah. better be careful here. Okay. Three, Three, two, one. Okay, yeah, you're all hey, correct. This dude, Tom this Brady, dude has 44 no idea. He's 44, years, yeah. about to be 45. <laughs> this thing's watching my answers, man. Oh right. my God, okay. dude. Let's go. Jorge I Masvidal see a thing. or Nate Diaz? Who, who, Masvidal or Diaz? Ooh. Masvidal or Diaz? Nate Diaz? Nate Diaz. Five, four, three, two, one, flip him. It is Jorge Masvidal. He is 37. I meant Masvidal. Why did I write Nate? <laughs> In my mind, I meant that, Masvidal. That could have cost you. Oh, God. It comes out. It just comes out. He's right Masvidal. It. All right. Last one. one, Glover's here. So okay, all right, all right, all right. So John Gooden, <laughs> that's me, or John Anik. Oh, oh, oh. Five, four, three, two, one, flip him. Right, there's been an injustice. There's been an injustice. What? There's an injustice. You are correct. I have to, I'm sorry, J.A. No. I have to confess. No, I'm older. What? I'm older. The disrespect to my skincare routine right now is offending me. <laughs> I am older than John Anik. No, no, said. it says John Anik. I know it does, but I'm John Gooden. I'm the other guy, and I'm 44. So, oh, my uh, goodness. I don't know how we're going to do that. I'll leave that to the uh, to the truck lords. No, no, no. We're no. even now. We're back oh, even. No, 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 no. no. We're back even. even now. Give we're back even. You said Anik. I said Anik. The bounce. All right, let's oh, move it on. We're going to come no, back no, to no, it. We're no. going to come. We're even I now. heard in my ear. What's happening? I what are we going with? What was on the screen or the actual truth? Can I have a, a decision? <laughs> no? Okay, this is it. Yeah. I got it right. Okay. We're all five. Five's yeah, a piece. Go. Let's go. Okay, Yuri Prohashka or Alexander oh. Rakic. Don't destroy the place, Michael. I didn't know we were going again. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Flip them. You're all correct on this side. Yes, right, right here. He is oh my goodness! Come on, go! Wipe him up. Let's, Let's go. go baby. All day, champ. You Kamara see, I got him, Usman. champ. I'm out here defending the title again, champ. You know I got these fools. PC. Kamara Usman or TJ Dillashaw. And five, four, three, Don't move two, so fast. one. I can't even write that fast. I'm gonna think and then I gotta write. It's TJ. Oh. TJ Dillashaw, 36. Dang! Oh, this missed. is getting tense. Whoa. Right, okay. Interesting one here. Jason Perillo or Trevor Whitman. You'd be sending in those birthday cards to Jason. Five, four, three, two, one. Flip them. Trevor's 50 something, right? It is Trevor Whitman, DC. Yeah. Laura, good work. He is 48. Uh, JP. I don't mind being tied with, with Bisbee because I know he's going to miss. Laura gives me a little word. <laughs> Next up, stage fan. manager to the stars, RJ Clifford or Michael Chiesa? Who? Oh. Michael Chiesa no, or RJ? Oh, Michael. Oh, uh, the stage manager to the stars. Four, for you. three, two, one. Everyone did well there, 38. Moving on. Two to go, Dana White or Joe Rogan? Aren't they the same age? Dana White or Joe Rogan? I know, but aren't they the same age? Oh, sorry. Name? In five, four, three, two, one. Ah! It is, it is yeah. Joe. <laughs> oh, no! Laura takes the lead. Okay, oh, one to no. go. Right. Game's wait, over, wait, wait, game's over. Game's over, DC, you lost. <laughs> Get used to it. Get you lost. used to it. Well, let's just do this one. Let's just do this one. 
You, you don't have to write it down. No. But UFC <laughs> supervising producer Michael Laplante or, a rock. or Dirt. <laughs> 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 He's actually writing an answer down. <laughs> okay. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's, uh, can we have can that piece of gold, please? We're bring, gonna come back it. to the wheel, but we need the gold. Bring it. I'm, not, I'm not even gonna come back. You'll get it, it back, time. DC. You'll get it back. Normally I saunter over there, but I'm gonna have you bring it to me this time. That's a slow walk Thank right you. there. I'll take. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Give it here. You're a good sport, really, DC. He's used to handing that to me. All right, are we all situated? It's been done a few we have times. a very special guest now about to join us. It is the reigning, defending, Slide light over, heavyweight buddy. champion of the world, Glover Teixeira. What's up, champ? What's going on, man? Kind of... Welcome. Oh. Thank you for joining us, Glover. Of course. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. Better now. now, you know. Better now? Right now, exactly. How was the cut? A little rough, man. Oh, really? really? Yeah, I have to wait, uh, you know, that time, the long time. It's kind of like... Wait you, as long as... Because it's not you, the morning weigh-in, right? Well, you got a long time, though, to the fight. you got longer than usual, yeah. right? Yeah. All How right. long have you been okay. on weight, Jim? We'll get these done uh, for you so that you can go back and rehydrate, 12, have a little 12, food. 12, 12 o'clock, uh, like one. Oh, uh, OK. We've done like one. Quite some time, then. No, he's been on that's, weight. That's, oh. a, that's a long day. Yeah. It's a long right. day. Why so, why, so yeah, why so early? Why so early? Why not? It's, it's kind of like right, anxiety. Be hot. I mean, you can't eat. What are you going to do? You know, can't eat, can't drink. So it's, uh, might as well get out of the way, cool it down, chill, stay hot, you know, stay in, uh, in the air conditioning, sleep a little bit, you know? Because, uh, Usually I go to bed at 9 o'clock here. And, uh, but I always lose my voice. Most of the time I lose my voice. Lately now because of the, the wake up, um, you know, the PI, all the stuff is good. You cut the weight, you go in, you drink, you hydrate right away. Well, now I feel kind of bad about the question that I'm going to ask because you're obviously, you know, in a bit of a depleted state. No, like, don't worry about it. Go I, ahead. I caught on Embedded that you were saying becoming a UFC champion yeah. was an impossible dream when you were younger. Now yeah. you're living that dream. Yeah. How does that feel? Where's that belt, you see? I lost it, man. Lord. I mean, we can, I, we can oh, grab I want it. Like can, I, can I grab that belt? Absolutely. Bell? No, I never. I, uh, I, I know. You got the new one. Yeah, you got the new one. Absolutely. I would no, give this to you any day of the week. It's like the original belt. Yeah, this is it. Oh, yeah. No, it's not the original. It's not the, it's the, it's the, it's the, oh, the, the, it's the last version. The last version of the belt. It's not the original. Yeah, it's the last version. That's not the one you have? That's, That's the, the one, one I had, yes. Yeah. Heavy, they might. Yeah, they are heavy. <laughs> I don't know about the new ones. I wanted one of the, the new one ones. The one is better, BSP. Of course it is. Come on. <laughs> You're going to put a, another ruby in it, I'm sure, this weekend. So, what's it like? Oh, sorry. Are you in it? Do you feel like you're in a dream still? Do you still like, feel like you're in a dream? Are you living the dream? I'm living the dream, yeah. It's amazing, you know, be here defending my belt. Uh, you know, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a journey, you know, I love it. I love everything about it, man. Like I say, even the weight cut, I stay home, you know, like, uh, I'm like, uh, you know, I cut the weight early and I'm staying all, you know, all this time home, but I'm like, hey, man, I've done this before. I've done this before because this is the old time. The old time used yeah. to be like that, you know? <laughs> we cut the weight and we had to wait for hours and you come down, you know? Hey. I, well, you're, you're whatever sorry, it is, I'm ready, man. I, I'm not the kind of guy that uh, I'm only okay with the good. I'm okay with whatever comes in my life because I'm, I am good. Yeah, but you, your you response know? about becoming the champion is you're living the dream, defending your title. I would have thought like the champ life, your lifestyle now as a champion. I was kind of thinking that you would talk about how life has changed for you. Yeah, my life is amazing. You know, my, uh, I mean. My life is amazing, man. I put myself in a situation, like I say, don't matter what happened in my life, I'm always gonna be okay, you know? I'm, I'm like, I'm peace, so, mentally peace. It's all done now. The way cut's over, the camp is over. Next time you see Yuri is tomorrow night. So that was the final opportunity. You've done this many times. Many times. So when you went face to face and you stared into his eyes and he looked back at yours, what was going through your mind? <laughs> <laughs> another day, man, another yeah. day. It's gonna be there tomorrow, you know, uh, you know, it's a fight, man. I'm like, uh, 
I'm a veteran, man. You know, it's tomorrow is gonna be there, and I'm gonna be ready, ready. You know, all the all the training camp, all my uh, all my jujitsu training, all my diet, all my uh, you know, all my conditioning. I'm ready. I'm ready for five round. I'm ready for whatever comes. You know, if it uh, you know, God forbid, one of the punch come and you know knock me out, hey, it is what it is. But you know, if that doesn't happen, I'm ready for five rounds, and I'm gonna be in his face. You know. We spoke earlier, and you talked about how you had to change your approach and your mentality in regards to rushing. Is that kind of how you felt staring at Yuri? Like, maybe when you were younger and on your way to a title, a little bit angry. Like, I want to take this dude's head off. Hey, but now it's just like, hey, different. it is what it is. Now, now, now it's like I'm, a, I'm aware, you know, the time. I know, like, I don't have to rush because uh, why rush? Because uh, that's not confidence. Yeah. You know, before I, used to, I that's what I think. I want to boom, 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 like I did with Anthony Johnson. Anthony Johnson is very powerful, man. I went right through it because uh, maybe not confidence. Now I have a confidence. I know I can pace. I can pace. I can see the punches. You know, watch it. Patient. You know, go for my game, man. Grind him. Take him to deep water. Glover, there's such a big difference in the UFC experience between you and Yuri, but just a massive difference. Where do you see that difference in, in, in that UFC experience expressing itself in the fight? How's that going to play out? Well, it's different, you know, it's a different character for, for everybody. I think uh, we all have a, a different character, right? Like, uh, we have a BSP here, Cormier, myself, uh, you know, different characters. That we possess, but uh, the same in the, in, the, in, the, in the octagon, you know? The same mentality in the octagon. Go out there, kill it, the same in the, in, the, in the training room, maybe. You know what I mean? But of course, with the talk, and, uh, you know, every, everybody's different. But like uh, in a fight game, we all are fighters, warriors. Absolutely. Yes, you are. Thank you so much for stopping by, Glover. We'll Thank let you, you get back to rehydrating, get yeah, some yeah, good yeah, food yeah. in you. We look forward to the performance it. as well. Appreciate Thank it. you very much, champ. Luck, for you guys at home, right. check out this. Learn a little bit more yeah. about the champ, Glover Teixeira. That's the Yes. Well, I lost to John Jones, and then I heard some people say, maybe he's, he's not going to make it, you know? And I say, it's not over yet. Oh, he's got it underneath the chin. He may go out. He does go out. Glover Teixeira is back. He intends to make his run back to the top of the division. Oh, that's it. It's it. But if anybody can get up to the challenge, it's this man right here, Glover Teixeira. The end might come here, and it does. It's over. Glover Teixeira showing off the veteran chops. All right, it's over. It's over. But this is a man who is hell-bent on getting back to a UFC championship situation. Now the hooks are in. This is where Glover's got it. That's it. Oh, this is going to be it. There's the tap. Still getting it done a few months shy of birthday number 40. This man, people have been trying to write him off. You can't count him out, man. Oh! The Whoa. left hook puts Smith down face first. Oh, my oh. goodness. Big punches from Clover. Mercifully, it's over. Another one bites the dust. He never gave up. You find yourself going, man, this is inspiration. And Teixeira might be under the chin here. There it is. Seven years after I fought John Jones and fought for the belt. Making the walk for his 40th professional mixed martial arts fight. Enter the number one ranked UFC light heavyweight contender, Glover Teixeira, as the most decorated finisher in the history of what has long been the UFC's glamour division. He is one win away from UFC gold and glory. Glover has a massive opportunity tonight, but legendary Polish power, man, it's a real thing. And if Jan Bohovic lands, your lights go out and you will just become another member of the highlight reel of Jan Bohovic. But with Glover Teixeira, it's about trying to get this fight to the ground without putting yourself in danger. Oh! oh! That was a beautiful left hook by Teixeira. Oh, oh nice combination by Bohovic. Beautiful slip uppercut there. Both fighters starting to open up here. Glover lands again. I had a strong mind and a strong heart, and I always believed that I could be a champion, and uh, that's what I did. Glover's into the mount here. Oh, oh my goodness, oh! Back. Oh, Glover Teixeira's got a flat out! 
Collins attacking his neck. Oh my God! Oh my, oh my God! God. God. Glover Teixeira breaks through at 42. Wow! He's the undisputed light heavyweight champion. Oh my goodness! Teixeira has done it. Oh. That's insane. He did bro. it. He actually did it. Only from Sobralia, at 19 years old. Come to America after a dream, after a better life, and I become a world champion. It is the most unpredictable theater in all of professional sports. What a moment. You know, if that don't motivate you, I don't know what else. Can't to do. I can't give him the, my back. I think that's the, that's, that's the worst thing. This guy's that's the worst okay. thing in the fight, which will happen. And I just have to be straight for him all the time. I know how to survive the bad moments, how to survive the punches on the ground. Doesn't matter. I, I, I will win. Doesn't that was a bit of a conversation. Yeah, that was. This isn't an official yeah. conversation. You haven't just tuned in at the wrong moment. These guys were doing some like champion level stuff. But uh, Yuri, great to have you here yeah. on the set with us. I wanted to ask you. You've fought a lot in Asia. So yep. what kind of it, uh, like good memories do you have of coming over to this part of the world and competing? Wow, uh, a lot of memories, but not so deep because, <laughs> because I was there uh, in the fighting in Japan just for, uh, for a, every time just for a fight week. Right. Yeah, no traveling, but I'm looking forward after, after this fight. I want to travel there, to travel in the Japan and uh, to, to train there to see more of, uh, of the martial arts of the Japan because You're doing I love it. After this fight? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, great stuff. Yeah. You know, well, I'll get you know, straight. On, on that, Yuri, how nice is it that because you are a martial artist, we yeah. can see this, you are a traditional martial artist, coming into this one, fighting Glover Teixeira, there's no bad blood, there's no trash talk, there's a lot of respect between the pair of you. Is that, is that important to you? It's not important, it's, it, must, it must go from you. Because if, if you have, if you train by yourself, and if you have self-confidence, then you don't need to, to scare somebody, somebody who's before you. Because uh, you have the. Are you saying that I'm scared in my fight, Yuri? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, how is I, your. I, I need to talk a lot of trash. That's what you, you're insulting <laughs> okay. me. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, about this. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you have to know yourself, and sometimes it's a strategy to scare somebody. Yeah, yeah. On the way, but most of the time it's just about your fear, your fear from yourself. That you have to scare somebody else. Yeah, no, no, that's because, a very. Good... And I'm, I, I'm, I'm good with with myself, so I, I can be the calm and see him, and I know I do, I will do everything, everything. Doesn't matter if it will be first, second, third, fourth, or fifth round. But you also got to know your opponents as well. Yeah. As well as knowing yeah. yourself. When yeah. you look at Glover. Yeah. He's strong. What, what's the biggest threat? Ah. Uh, I think that's his biggest strength and the biggest weakness is his pressure. He's, he, he's doing the press all the time, yeah? And if you count with that, you can, you can uh, wait, for, wait for him in that. But if you, are, if it's, uh, if it's, if you catch some punches, then it's very hard how, how he keep going, still, still keep going. Yeah. I think that's, the, his, that's his, uh, biggest weapon. Yuri, you say that there's a ton of respect, right? But when they were showing the clip of Glover becoming the champion, you were kind of watching him, watching him with some intensity. Like, it, it, what does it look, when you watch him become the champion, look at you right away and go, you're next, Yuri. Like, what is that? Like, you're looking at him like, and you're kind of moving. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a, it's a natural instinct. I want to be the best. I want to I want to show the, all all of the, all of uh, all the people. I am I am the best. I am the strongest man in light heavyweight right now, and I, I I want to show that. Just just that. Yuri, for the fans who 
only watch UFC and aren't familiar with your career before you got to the UFC, what part of your game do you feel like they may might be sleeping on? What what parts of your game have the fans that have only watched your UFC fights? What do they not know about? What do you mean? What, just just. If if a fan has only watched you in the UFC, yeah. they're missing big parts of your game that you yeah. showed in other promotions. What are they missing? They're missing. Uh... <laughs> What, I think. what side of you have they not seen? Yeah, uh, I know, I understand, I understand. Uh, I think my, my, but I'm, I'm showing the, my craziness in the cage. So you I, are doing I, that. I, I'm nature. Like, I don't I, think they're missing hey, that. You I, don't go with the craziness with the hairstyle as yeah, well. But, we got to talk about this year. I, I'm, I'm crazy normally, normally, <laughs> I, but like, uh, I don't want to be like that because that, that, Samurai way, <laughs> it's it's teaching me to keep myself down and leave it j just in a cage. To leave my yeah. to release the energy, all, all the energy, just in a cage. That's that's I think uh, the people don't know. Yuri, the champ just sat here a few minutes ago and said the weight cut was a bit difficult, especially having to sit on the weight for yep. so long. Yep. But when you sat down and that was a conversation that we were having. You said, I made the weight at 12 o'clock. Yeah. I ate again, yeah. then had to cut the weight again. Yeah. Yeah. That confidence, it, but look at, you look fresh. Your yeah. face doesn't look drawn in. You look more like comfortable. Yeah. What goes into that? Because most fighters want to just sit there and go like, I'm yeah. not doing nothing else. Yes, I, uh, I had uh, more than 100 kilos normally, but I stopped to- 220 yeah. for everyone, for the Americans. Thank I, you. I, I, I cut my weight to, to 98, 99, and I started to to do from this weight my comfortable, my normal weight, yeah. And from that time, I feel better in the 99 with 99 kilos. I feel more faster. I feel stronger, and it's for me lighter to to cut weight, cut the weight in the weight on weight day. So, so tomorrow night, yeah, or Sunday, 220. What do you think you'll be in the octagon? 220? Uh, sorry, 100 kilos? Uh, 97? Oh, 97. 97. 97. So 214. Yeah, 97, yeah, 214. Okay. Yeah. Because, no, no, I, I, I have to, I have to feel my, myself like I have no weight. I, I have yeah. to, be, yeah, I, 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 light, I can, I can, agile, I, can be, I can be everywhere, everywhere. Because then I can, Catch every mo every moment, every moment of the, of uh, of uh, Glover's movement. Yep, yep. Be faster. So, yep. Yuri, we've only seen you without a crowd in the UFC in quiet arenas. Now you're going to have a packed Man. house here Man, with all of that energy. Before I step uh, on the weight, I said myself, "Man, I like to to fight before the, before people." Yeah, because it's a uh, it's an amazing, amazing energy, which uh, keeps me, keeps me pushing me forward, forward. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I like it. So I we're like gonna get more because it's not just about. I'm fighting not just for for myself. I'm fighting for to to to, to show the beauty of martial arts for the people. I That's get all. It. Great stuff. We're very much looking forward to this one. And if there's even more to come from you, Yuri, then we're down for it. Thank you so much. Go away, eat, drink. Thank and you. we will see you on Sunday morning, Saturday night to those at home. Thank you very much. And for you guys at home, check out a feature to show us a little bit more about Yuri Prohashka. Love, love. Came from a small village, Osteradice, which is around 2,000 people. I was like a crazy guy who likes to street fight. And martial arts uh, helped me to be more calm. My coach gave me the book of five rings. It's a way of the warrior from the Japanese culture. Calmness and stillness of the mind is the main thing. mind is our biggest weapon. If you realize that, then you will practice this. And 
after the practicing of years, uh, my life changed. Naskočený koleno. Oh, a naskočené koleno. Další dva údery na zemi a je konec. Oh, prodloužil a teď protnul svého soupeře a gluk. Procházka to rozjíždí tvrdě. Teď Ben zkusil nastoupit do takedownu, ale na... Ben zatím má tu obranu poměrně slušnou, ale v tuhle chvíli odklepal. Procházka je vzpůsobná 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 allowed him to amass 25 finishes in 26 career wins across Europe and Japan, seizing world championships in the process. My targets is the highest, highest targets in every step of my life. After some time in Japan, I realized that it's my destiny to be the champ in the league of the best. So here he is at Czech Republic's Yuri Prohaska. He's a philosophical, thoughtful fighter. A man that studies martial arts, lives and breathes the sport. Prohaska would then enter the deep end of the UFC's light heavyweight waters to fast track a shot at the belt with back to back wins over former title challengers. He said, When I get to the UFC, I want to take over. I want to be the champion. Oh, there it is! Yuri wow. Prohaska! Welcome to the big show! Czech Republic's on the map. I mean, what a rise. If Prohaska can pull this off tonight. Does this person get the winner for the belt? Dana said yes. This man is a throwback. This man is a relic. But this man is dangerous. Make no mistake. Prohaska on the warpath now. An intensity. It is through the roof with this man. How Look about at this? this? Prohaska still foot on the gas pedal. Spinning oh, elbow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. Spinning elbow. The creativity, the diversity of attack, the confidence he has when he throws. Yuri Prohaska, 12 fight winning streak, 25 knockouts. UFC gold will hang in the balance the next time we see this guy in the octagon. Is this what you want? Do you think you're ready to face the next title holder? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yuri! Denise! Well, he's certainly unique, isn't he, DC? Did you know that he lives by a lake and he gets his water from a well? It's got electricity, Wow! but that's how he gets his water. This is what John does. He comes yeah. with those little starts, those little no, starts. Yeah, you he, like that, though, right? He's, you like an that. Intense, he's an intense guy, man. He really is. and He's fun. You know, I got to talk to him earlier this week. I sat down with him one of my check-ins. You know, you can watch it, my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> like that plug so right the guy, on the the guy, We're listen, talking YouTube. The guy, the guy, the guy Subscribe and ring the bell. In, the guy is very intense. He's very skilled. But the one thing that he just told me that for the first time is a bit concerning is he's going to be very light when he goes in there. Right. He said he's only going to be 97 kilos. That's 214 pounds. That's nine pounds off of the championship weight. A gallon of water is eight pounds. It's actually 213.4. 213.4. So he's, wow. he's eight, eight and a half pounds over. Eight and a half pounds. Guys, this is absurd. Because Glover Teixeira, especially knowing the style in which he's going to try to put on him, if he can get him grappling for an extended period of time with that weight, because I believe Glover will weigh every bit of 223, 225 going into the octagon, it can play a part. Will it? I'm not certain. Yeah. He but... seems very confident that he's okay at this weight. He wants to feel weightless so he can move. Yeah. I get it, but that's light. But, but, compare his energy to Glover. Glover exactly. is sitting here. Glover was, you know, listen, he's been through a voice strenuous gone too. The voice is gone. For Glover, sorry, for Yuri, pardon me, he needs to utilize, as you just said, a lot of movement, stay off his back, defend takedowns. The longer the fight goes, being lighter, faster, more agile, that can help. The key to Yuri's game is that movement, and not just the movement, but the timing. He's got really unusual timing. He hits shots kind of on an offbeat. 
And to be able to move and, and, and see that timing and have those quick reactions, I mean, he said it right to you. He needs to be light to be able to do that. Obviously, he's, he's comfortable coming in it that way, but I'm with you, DC. That is really That's low light. for a light heavyweight. I'm looking at his resume, and he's on an incredible streak. Was it 12-fight win streak? He got the title at Rising. One defense at Rising. Moves to the UFC. And I want both of your responses. I'll go with DC first. He's 205. It's his division. He's had two fights. Is, is all of this a bit too soon? You know, the craziest thing about that is that happens at light heavyweight. Because for a long time, it was a division that had two champions, right? It was either Jones or myself. So guys only have to win a couple fights in order to get to the belt. I fought Volkan Uzdemir under the same circumstances. I'm just wondering, how does Yuri deal with when it goes a little bit sideways? Now, we have seen him at times get hit. He gets hit a lot. He got hit by Vulcan. Dominic Reyes had moments, even though he got beat up. We just remember the spinning elbow. So Yuri has shown an ability to deal with that a little bit better than some of the other fighters that have gotten there quickly. One of the things that makes me confident in Yuri, honestly, is his win over one of my good buddies, Mo Wall, back in Japan. Yeah. Because Mo's a fantastic wrestler. He was Very able to good. defend those takedowns and finish Mo. The first time Mo beat him by using takedowns. But he went back, he got better, he addressed those issues and made himself better. So I don't know if this is too soon for him because he has been doing this for so long against such high level competition. Now fighting in front of the UFC crowd for the first time for a title, maybe that could present the issue. High level competition for sure. I mean, the Mola Walls of the world, the CB Dalloways of the world, but when you look at their respective resumes, there is no doubt that Glover Teixeira has faced the more difficult competition. Oh, yeah. And when but, you look at what Dominic Reyes was able to do in terms of the grappling, I, I mean, he was able to take him down. And yeah. if that happens with Glover Teixeira, I just, I don't know if I see Yuri being able to get back up. Those names that you mentioned there, CB Dalloway, Dalloway, Molawal, yes, great fighters. But fair to They're say, no also at the Past end their of their careers. Yeah. Now, Glover Teixeira, one could argue, he's at the end of his career. He's 42 years old, but he's also on the best form of his life. Of course, he's the current champion. Going back to the weight cutting thing earlier, you've got to remember, middleweight, Israel Adesanya, dominant champion. He's very, small very too, right? late uh, light for the weight class. Anderson Silva wasn't a gigantic but guy. The only time there is people that don't go in with a belly like this <laughs> look, 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 and look, been look, very look, successful. Look. Extra medium-sized shirts, that's what Bisping wears. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? Look at uh, this. Mikey, listen. Mikey, listen. We love the shirt. Listen, I love yes, the shirt. Israel Asanya <laughs> fights light. The only time that and showed it fights it, well. But the only time that showed itself was when he was in there with a person trying Jan. to take him down. And when Jan Bohos was actually... They try and take him but, down. No, but listen, when a guy that was bigger and was able to take him down, then he could not get him off of him. That is that all I'm saying. that was a weight class up. But again, he was, he was able to be up, and he still played it really light. He waited at 190-something thinking, hey, I can do this. His natural weight for Izzy is probably 195, 197. 200 on a heavy day, I would imagine, right? I'm telling you, bro, when you get these big top, these big wrestlers on top of you like that. I know. And you're light, it could present problems for you. Yeah, but different weight classes. You know, Israel went up to 205. I understand what you're saying, and of course I agree. I've spent a bloody a lifetime hating you type, <laughs> hating wrestlers, <laughs> taking me down, lying on top of me. I hate it. John, over to you, my friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> 43 years young, Glover Teixeira. Yeah. Michael, we've heard about your age earlier, and I, I've we've been talking this good. week. You look my great. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> but, <you were> <laughs> wait, wait, but look at this, guys. Look at this now. When has anyone been more British than Michael Bisping? <laughs> Oh, this I guy know. for the first oh time, right? God. Like, this is annoying. I, I know, I'm being out British. <laughs> Sorry. I'm out Britain. <laughs> Sorry. But you he's even got the bad teeth. Yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. I'll oh, take no. that one. I'll oh, take I, that one. I, I, I don't know I, the money. At least yours are real. <laughs> yeah, well, but maybe not for long now. Now you told me that I need to get him fixed. <laughs> Look at DC. It's okay, DC. I'll take that one. That's all this good. This guy's out of his mind, That's bro. That's all good. Ask the question. But yeah, we were talking earlier this week and like all the ailments. When you get to a certain age, the kind of fight yep. level that you guys have been at for the longest time, and Glover's done that. How, when you look at someone like Glover, what kind of respect do you have for him? And do you say to yourself, how the heck is he still doing this at that level? Oh, 100%. I mean, I am 43, so he's only a year younger than me. 
you know, he looks 53. Let's be well, honest. Well, this is actually, but, but, this is actually but, probably the most what true must one. He say now? Angry Cap John Gooden is more British than you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, he it's is the though. wear and tear. I mean, Glover Teixeira has been in lots of wars. He's had lots of fights. You know what I mean? To see him still compete at this level at that age, yeah, very, very impressive. I don't know how he's still doing it, but, but it does catch up with you at some point. I just think that. I just think that all that experience from those high-level fights, right, it's given him so much knowledge, and I think that that knowledge has allowed for him to change the training to be yep. able to compete at this this age. You know, one but thing, how, how can you change? You still have to spar. Yeah, but you still got to go through the motions. Yeah, but you he can said wear that him and, gear, not yeah, as hard. Yeah, he said him and Pajeda, they take care of each other. Okay. Because they both know how to take care of each other, so they're hitting hard. And he goes, I can't stand with Alex Pajeda. He goes, I just can't. He goes, when I mix in my wrestling, now I can stand with him a little bit. But they take care of each other. But, but like I said, he said when he was younger, he would rush. If he lost, he would rush into the gym, train four times a day. He said then he decided, I've got to be smarter because I can't do the same thing. My insecurities can't force me into doing the same thing again and hoping for a different result. He said that is what's allowed him to get through these fights, he's fresher. He feels better, and that's why he's able to do this at this age. But the reality is, athletes are competing longer today. It, I, I don't know how the science I, people are getting smarter. The sure. science is getting better. I mean, Tom Brady's 45 years old, about to be 45 years old. You know, and it's because of LeBron, year 20, 38 years old, right? Smarter, better, stronger, and Glover follows suit with those elite athletes. And he never quit training. He hasn't had big layoffs because of injuries. He hasn't had to go away and then reset and come back and start fresh. I mean, he's never he's never been out of the gym. And I think when you keep that consistency yeah. and stay training in, in just a very smart, intelligent Don't way. Don't break the routine. And I love the word that you use there, that insecurity that makes you want to rush back in. And I got to train, 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 train. He's older, he's wiser, well, he's more mature. He's, as the, the great ego. Jason Perillo says, it takes confidence to take a day off. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Well, and Glover also said he never he hasn't been hurt. Right, so when you take like as a cha when you become a champion, sometimes you don't fight often because you're making so much money. You feel like okay, now I don't have to fight so much. Glover's never been the champion. Glover's never really been hurt. He said he's never really had to pull out of a fight hurt, and because of that, that consistency, he's never broken the routine of being an athlete. That allowed for him to continue to do it at this age. Okay, all right, we're going to go back to having a little bit more fun, Woo! gentlemen, lady. And uh, circling back to the idea that Yuri Prohashka has earned a title shot uh, just after two fights, keep that theme in mind. So thumbs up or thumbs down if this fighter has earned a title shot in two or less fights. These are all male fighters. Earning a title shot. Has earned. Earned. Okay. Past participle. Oh, 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 so this is a yes, yes or no? no. The thumbs up or down? Right, yes, <laughs> right. Easy. All right. yeah. You can Four. draw a thumb if you like. But these are all male fighters in the UFC modern era. You guys say era. So number one, Anderson Silva. Did he get a title shot? Yes. Two shots. Or less. He shouldn't say it out loud. In two oh, shots or less. That's the whole point. No, in two of shots or less. Board. Like he was kind of like. One fight, Chris Yes, Steven. he beat one Lever. fight. He fought for the bill. Yes. Forty seconds. Uh, at the pearl of the palms, no, the, the joint of the hard rock. Bonus, bonus points there for Michael Bisping. There, I like that. Yes. Randy Couture. Two or less to get a title shot. No, took three. Mm. Oh, well. Took three for Randy. I, I, I thought uh, it was Only smart. DC. Well done. Brock Lesnar. Two or less Ooh. for Brock. Two, one. It was two for Brock. Ah. He lost to Mir. He lost to Frank yeah. Mir. And then he fought for the belt. And then, oh, no, and, oh, no, and then, then he beat Heath Herring. Yes. Then he, then, then he fought no. Frank Mir. But two or less. That was his third fight. Like, I mean, yes. we need clarification here. So I'm I mean, I'm correct. Being, I'm, we need I'm clarification coming under here, fire guys. here. I'm coming under fire. <laughs> I'm telling you right oh, now. He, he, he lost to Frank Mir. I mean, we've got yeah, the most, some of the most competitive men on the planet. They're no, losing their minds. That's his third honest. fight. No, no, I got yeah. We've got radio Same. silence from the producers. Third I feel like they've left the because building. Because they're, they're confused because we they know all got it. We all got it right. Let's they know it's shit. No, give everybody a point. No, I, give everybody I a point. I feel like tables are going to get turned here. No, give everybody a point. They're already moving on the screen. Take that away from me. 
Loser like they're fight. fighting. Okay. Next question, let's, John. Let's put a pin in that. Took him two Jason. fights to get his title shot. That is the final answer. Okay. Rampage Jackson. Two or less to get a title shot. Two or less to get a title shot. Flip him. Flip him. Second fight, he beat Marvin Eastman. Marvin Bis Eastman in he his first one. Bisping got it. And then he knocked out Chuck Liddell to take oh, the belt. Oh, was Chuck still the champ? Oh. oh, he lost the belt to Forrest. Right, moving wow. on. Joseph Benavides. What, what, yes or no? Two yeah, fights? Two or? fights or less, yeah, same deal, same deal. Two or less. Oh. This is a guess. This okay, flip them, let's go. The little guys. Oh. You got it, two. <laughs> two fights. Michael is wrecking us. Oh, I like wrecking. this one. <laughs> Give me the vote. Evan Tanner. Evan Tanner, oh, Evan poor Tanner. old Adam, no God idea. bless him. Rest in peace. Two or less. Here what do you get? Flippity bit. Took him three. Took him three. Well done, DC. DC Took him DC. three. DC with his guesses. Next oh, up, like Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber? Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber, though. <laughs> he had about 40,000 title shots. Are we including WEC? That's so what I'm going to say, yes. Two or less. He had about 40,000 title shots. We flipped him. I'm just... I'm getting, okay, I'm well getting then, absolutely Yes, yes. Yeah, I need to get one. Uh, Laura's losing that belt right oh, now. I'm oh. <laughs> Curveball here, Joe Soto. Oh. I remember that. Three. No. Flip him. It was an immediate title well, shot. Yeah, he, got got immediate title <laughs> he got that immediate title that's, shot. He got that immediate title shot. His first uh, fight was for the belt. All around your waist, that right. belt, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Gilbert Melendez. Okay. Two or less. Oh, but from another organization. I know. That's... So two or less. Three, uh. two, one. Flip them. Flippity bed. Yeah, well done, everyone. It was in his debut. Shane Carwin. Big Shane. Yeah. Took him four. Well done. <laughs> Shogun Hua. That's tricky. Cool. <laughs> Flip him. Oh, well done. He well got, done, Michael. Well done, DC. Took him yep, three. Look, look. Look. I said no. Jake Shields. Jake Shields. Oh, Jakey Bakey. Yes, indeed, Jakey Bakey. Jakey Bakey Shields. Three, two, one. Well done, Bispin. Took him Wait, one. Wait, Jake Shields? Jake yes. Shields fought just one. Damien Mike? It's mad, isn't it? I didn't, I didn't remember that. Carlos Newton. Oh, Carlos, yeah. This is actually crazy that Bisping is... Was he a brawl in the hall at 38? He was, yes. Three, two, one, flip them. Yes, <laughs> yes. It was two. Well done, Laura. Good guess. Thank you. Um, Tito Ortiz. <laughs> Who? Tito you Huntington know. beats Bad Boy. Oh, my God. I mean, look at that. Tito Ortiz. Oh, oh. Who, who? Bisping, double figures for Bisping. Did we get that, Tito Ortiz? Uh, Two or less. Three, two, one. Flip them. Uh -uh. <laughs> I might just sit up now because I'm so far ahead. Yeah. So You're only two ahead of me. I know. Right. Did, they, did they get that? Was that right? Am I getting yes, confused? Yes, I got it correct, John. Stop sticking up for Was that right? Uh, okay. Did you guys get that wrong in the truck? No. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> Dan Henderson. Two or less. Decision Dan. TRT Henderson. Two. And I think this is the last one. one. Last one. one. Fight pretty quick, huh? Oh, Vulcan. Hey, 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 hey. Vulcan Erzdemir. Fights. Vulcan Erzdemir. Two or less for no time. Did he get to the title in no time? Oh, look at you. Three, two, one. No, no, no. Well done. Took him three. Good work. Michael Bisping, you are the winner. You know I'm what that means. Please show the score. Please show the score. Well, all right, let's pull the scores show up. Show the score. It had to be scores pretty close. Scores the screens, please. <laughs> yeah, I was in the game. I was still in the game. No, I didn't no. say you were. It was 12 -10. No, I'm a full two points ahead. If it was five to three, would that be close? No. Let me ask you a question, Mike. That's full DC. If I had got three spin points the and you had one, that, that no, Mike, that I would not be close. I got to ask you a question. Mikey B, I'm sure you're going to make Laura do this, right? Do well, what? Like whatever shows up on this thing. No, no. no. Wait, Mike. Just give me the belt. You, do you want it handed to you or would you yeah, like to collect it? Yeah, just give me the belt. Okay. Good 
goodness. I have to Laura. walk over there. Sound like, you sound like you're ordering a sandwich for your, from your <laughs> wife. Yeah, yeah. Might have needed coffee while you're there. I should have done. I should have passed over Rebecca, the footage. Rebecca, get us a coffee. Make me a sandwich, Rebecca. Eagle chip. Yes. Last, chip last eagle night, night before, you had to deliver. Hey, Chip. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Mike. I know you like coffee. Here you go, Don't get off. No, oh, right, Chip. you have to pick someone. Uh, Chip, here's some coffee, man. DC, spin the wheel. What? No eye contact either. Spin the wheel. He's been eating Get yourself up there, DC. DC's a loser, man. Give it a little spin. Oh, he's... Here's the reality of the situation. Laura is owed a spin because when you won, we got busy, so you didn't get the spin. So, no. Laura, somebody That's needs to. That's no. true. What's it say? Oh, the shocker. It is the shocker. That is an excellent point, Daniel Torrey. What? Yeah, dude, it's Laura. Gone. You want it up? Laura, gone. No, no, you want Laura, it you get, make, choose somebody to spin the wheel. You want no. it all the way? I heard DC. No, okay. No. Hey, Laura should get somebody to spin the wheel because she didn't. Until yeah, Laura gets her spin. How about you both hey. both get shot? Until Laura gets her spin, I, I am not I'm doing not it. Until Laura gets what's whoa, 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 justly whoa, whoa, hers. Until Laura gets her choice, You're which is her right. Shine as a which champion. is her right. <laughs> right. Which is her right. Laura needs to pick yeah. someone to spin the wheel. Just I'm just stood up. DC. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, take the wheel. Take the shock wheel. I'll take it. Show me. I don't care. I'm the champ. Let me take this shit out. Come on, DC. Take this You little bitch. Press the button, press the button, Mike, press the button. It's, the button has been pressed. No, this oh. button, this button, on top. Which button? This, up here. Oh, right. oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mike, go, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. No way! I just got shocked. You did well there. You a dickhead. We'll do it again. Oh, we're going again? Oh, right, okay. But, uh, yeah. RJ? Hold that was... Stop! Oh. <laughs> that came in fast. That came in that's, fast. That's, Don't press the button, oh. Mike. Don't press the button. All right, well, why are these guys are playing the right there? Press the button on me, Mike. you got to add more players. Quick well, champ. Stop breaking it. Oh, 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 okay, now we're now ready. John Anik. Hold it again. Hold it again. Oh, right. It wasn't ready. It was set. Stop! Let's go in at you and no bad. Not five minutes early. Dude, you never shocked you. Don't look at me. You never shocked you. Take that look up your face. Hours before your flight. Too aggressive. Early bird gets the work. Much like Yuri Prohaska's shot at gold is coming after just two spectacular UFC performances. But he's not the only fast track story in UFC history. Here now, some timely notables. You may recall a spry 31-year-old Anderson Silva and his early arrival after just one UFC fight, dethroning Rich Franklin in the duo's first meeting. Strikeforce lightweight champ Gilbert Melendez got the priority boarding call in his first UFC outing. Brock Lesnar's fourth pro fight and third in the UFC was for the title, all of that happening in the span of an expeditious 17 months. And Big Nog's sophomore UFC outing departed on time with him as the interim champion. So as far as rapid ascents go, Yuri's opportunity is indeed without delay, especially compared to his opponent's decade-long UFC career. But of course, just like that early trip to the airport, there's no chance he's missing this flight. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're on a quiz on what we just saw in that VT. So is everyone paying attention? Oh, so yeah. We, yeah. Yeah? I have okay. no idea no, what right, that was okay, about. Okay, I won't do that. Right, we're going to do rapid fire now. Please explain to rapid. him it's rapid. Rapid means quick. R hey, hey, that's though. unfair. That's unfair. And we're going to go Laura, Michael, DC. I'd like us to keep a little order here if we can on this okay, rapid okay. fire. Okay, okay you okay. got this? All right. <laughs> Question one, over, under. Two and a half fights in Glover's career, not including tomorrow. Laura. I'm going to say under only because he literally said it on the countdown show. He said, I've got room for two posters, this one and one more. That's the only thing I'm going off of. What are you talking about? Oh, well. I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Just say over or under. I didn't under. Uh, two and a half fights in Glover's career, over or under, not including tomorrow. Left what? in his career, I'm assuming. Does he have more than two oh, and a half fights? Oh, will he have two or more fights after this? Yes. And a half, apparently. I mean, there's no right answer to this, is there? Because it's purely... We don't know. You're Can you just for play? Your opinion, Can you just play for the over under? No. For your opinion. No. <laughs> no, you're out. No. Okay, no, no I'm saying oh. no to the question. I was saying no. under, that's good. Under. That's going to be an under. Okay. I, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under. I think he. I think he's going to fight go this under? one. Yes, we all went yeah, under. I think he's he's about. I mean, he's 42 years old. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Buy or sell? Yuri's reckless style is a good thing, Laura. In this fight. I'm no, not in this fight, in general in terms. Hey, 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 I'm asking the question. Yeah, but so. you never said that, though. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, now that Michael's Good clarified, point. I think it's a great thing. I don't know about in this fight, but sure. Are you buying it or are you selling it? I'm buying it. Buying it? Recklessness for Yuri? Buying or selling? I would never buy reckless behavior. Of course not. <laughs> so selling. 
You've never exhibited regular I'm just not buying it, because how, how can I sell it? I've never owned it to start with. <laughs> well, it's not yours to it's buy. It's it's I'm looking at it through the window. I'm like, I don't want this recklessness, OK? This crazy. Take talking it of, away. Speaking of recklessness, Coming DC, the I buy it. I buy it because it kind of reminds me of Oliveira. Like, it's so fun, but somebody's going to get them eventually. And I think that it could cost Yuri tomorrow. But until it does, it's pretty fun to watch. OK. Fact or fiction, Laura? Yuri Prohashka can win this fight if it goes to a judge's scorecard. Uh, fiction. I think that the, the style, the clash of styles there, if it's a decision, it's going to be Glover's decision. Absolute fact. And that is insulting of you to say, Laura. He can't win a decision. I just wow. Think, you I, see Yuri Prohashka wearing I did, a... I did, yeah, I, of course. I, I, I tend to... Uh, uh, with the, with the, uh, I tend to with agree. With the movement. I tend to agree. I tend to agree. <laughs> was that my accent? No, he's not. You're, no, you're, you're, that, did good. you not see the hand movement as well? That, yeah. uh, uh, hey. with, the, uh, with, with the movement. I tend to agree with Laura. I think that Yuri wins by knockout. Glover takes a decision. Because remember Scott? Remember Anthony? He was beating Glover up, and then the longer it went, the worse it got for him. Man, nice hands Glover builds. Glover builds. Yeah. You respect it when he says it, though. Uh, um, um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> true or false? <laughs> Dude, Laura, I love Glover Teixeira gets <laughs> knocked down in this fight. True. Glover Teixeira gets knocked down in this fight. Glover gets knocked down in almost every single one of his fights, but he's incredibly <sighs> tough, and he gets back up, and he wins a lot of them. But, yes, I see him get knocked down. Did Finally, you know that? Hey, Laura, 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 Laura. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Laura is a kind of color analyst, reporter, and a former fighter. And did you know <laughs> she trains with James Cross? I, 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 I don't know if you knew no, that. No, no, no. Did you know no, that? No. She, she had a did you want to break some news Did you know well, she Laura? trains with James Cross? I, mean, I could. I could. She wants to break some news no, as well. I, I know. I mean, it's not a done deal. I mean, yeah. It's not a done deal. Okay. What's happening? Wait, wait, wait. Moving out. I mean, She's I competing like in the grappling tournament. Oh, my God. Let's go, Laura. Let's go, Laura. Let's go, your question. Answer it. True or false, Glover Teixeira gets knocked down in this fight. Yes. You know, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, false. He'll be wrestling early. He'll, he'll be wrestling early Keyword and trying rapid. not to to get knocked down. Remember, rapid. he didn't get knocked down against Sean, so rapid. Okay, Laura, more impressive: Glover's journey to a title or Charles Oliveira's journey to a title? Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna say Charles Oliveira only Ooh. because there was such a talk Rapid. about him being a quitter. Adversity. Yes, yes, for that's, sure. That's my answer. For sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Quit rushing Go ahead, me, Mike. Yeah, Well, it's called rapid You're fire. Me anxiety. It's not called <laughs> meandering <laughs> fire. It's not called sauntering down the hallway. You're actually and sauntering it. right now. Yeah. You're well, sauntering. You're Charles <laughs> Oliveira. He was stopped eight times. He became the champion. He finally claimed the gold after people wrote him off. Is that rapid Rapid, Michael. Yeah. Rapid. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah. I started Glover, with the answer. Glover Teixeira. Because yeah. he has been there, gotten beaten, been to the number one contender, gotten beaten, and ultimately finally crossed in one the hill. As well, yes, right? in one division. Yeah. Buy or sell, Valentina Shevchenko tops 100 significant strikes for the first time in her UFC career. Buy. Absolutely. You're buying that one? I'm buying it. Against in one Talia you Santos? You mean tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, so you, what you're saying there, though, essentially, is that Talia Santos can absorb yes. 100 strikes. I think I, she's tough enough. I, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's just pure. It's it's a guess. Balance, so don't be offended, other Talia. Than her, other than her kicks, no. Valentina's okay. not a knockout. Ra rapid artist. fire. Just a reminder. Rapid yeah, fire. No. Yeah. No. No. That's one I'm going to sell because I, I don't know if they count the ground strikes as significant. Oh, so I think they that shouldn't. I don't think they do. I, I, I'm not certain unless. If they do, she'll take her down, maybe, but it'll be a longer fight. I do believe that. And plus, Valentina's a counter strike. So if you don't go into her, how she's gonna land 100 strikes? That's why she never has done it before. Okay. And last of the rapid fire questions true or false? If Valentina wins, she moves up to challenge for the UFC bantamweight title, Laura. True. I think that's gonna happen. If who wins? Well, who do you think? Go. Valentina, of course. Whoa, 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 watch your tone, John. <laughs> right? And by the way, if we want to go rapid, we'll go rapid. If we want to go slow, we'll go slow. Hall of Fame's over here, bud. All right. Okay? All right. Right? okay. DC, what are you having for dinner tomorrow, mate? What are you having for dinner? Oh, sorry. And then we got to do a rapid fire question. You're so crazy, man. Yeah, go yeah. on. What oh, was yeah, the question? What yeah. was it? I'll give it to you again, then. True or false, if Valentina wins, she moves up to challenge for the UFC Bantamweight title. She said it specifically, so yes, true. <sighs> I believe, I believe if Juliana wins, I think she will. I'm not certain she goes up and fights Amanda again. Really? I just, 
I don't. I don't. I don't know. So I'm okay. gonna go false. All right. Okay. Well, now we're gonna pause from all of this stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now it's time to go and join Megan because she's with Valentina Shevchenko, the champ. As you'll probably say right Thank you so now. much, guys. <laughs> Valentina, before you jumped into camp for this one, you spent about four months in your home country of Kyrgyzstan. How did that prepare you to get ready for another fight and really impact you? It just, uh, I had so much energy from there, like meeting with uh, all my family, all, all my friends, visited, revisited places where I was growing up. It's kind of like charged me so much. And then you jumped into camp and your opponent was Tyla Santos. I know that you take everyone very seriously. So when you break her down and you really look at her as an opponent, what stands out to you, if anything? Uh, I just like look at her and I'm trying to figure out what is her weak side, definitely to know her strong side. And it's kind of like no matter who, no matter what I have to do, I just will break her. I know that you are never intimidated in there. You always have all of this self-belief. And you're a martial artist to your core. What are your expectations for yourself out there? I just go there and perform my art as best as I can. Every time I go there and I leave all my heart inside the octagon. This is the everything what I want to do and will do. That's why fans love you and you resonate so much. You know, when you look at Tyla and you look at the other opponents you face, not just in your mixed martial arts career, but maybe in you know kickboxing as well, do you feel like you face someone with a similar skill set? Uh, you know, kind of like in martial arts, mixed martial arts, it's every time different. Yes, I kind of like, I had several opponents, like they kind of like looks like to her, like her style. But you cannot like uh, think that it's the same because everyone, every one person is different. And we have to prepare for exact this person. I know you've prepared. You did most of your camp in Las Vegas, but then you spent, I think, about two weeks in Florida before coming here to Singapore. What was it about Florida that had you traveling there to prepare? Uh, climate. Because I knew uh, Las Vegas is an amazing place, so good for like every athlete, especially with UFCPI, but uh, climate is super dry. And I know that in Singapore it's super humid. Definitely we have to find a place, Florida, humid, hot, especially like for this condition and then we had two weeks for acclimatization like the best as I can here in Singapore as well. Man you are just a citizen of the world and a scientist down to the art here. Um, you know when you do get to travel because you do it so much how important is it for you to be able to experience you know the culture and the fans that are here and the place you're going to perform? Uh, I think it's part of what I do every time in my travel. I don't go to the place, I just sit in the hotel or just like some like beautiful places. No, I ha I want to dive into the what people do, where they go, where they uh, like when they have a rest, vacation, what they do, what they eat and just see what they kind of like their philosophy. And then the ultimate payoff is you fighting in the octagon and hopefully getting your hand raised. When you envision it, Valentina, what do you see? Uh, it's kind of like I never uh, envisioned that I work very hard to make that happen actually because people who just envision that is like doing a little they didn't get anything but I am like backwards I do a lot envision after I love that all right I'm gonna start applying that to my own life Valentina best of luck to you have fun out there thank you, so much. Thank you for your time guys back to you Thanks, Megan. So let's check out the women's pound for pound rankings then. And at number one, Valentina Shevchenko. Go down to number two, Amanda Nunes. We have Juliana Pena in three, Rose Namayunas in four, Zhang Wei Li in five, and we might as well rip through the rest of them. Carla Esparza in at number six. In at number seven, Jessica Andrade. At number eight, it's Marina Rodriguez. And at number nine, it's Holly Homer just creeping up there. At number 10 is Caitlin Chukagian. So that begs the question, do we all agree? And I'm going to go to Laura first for this one. So Laura, your top five pound for pound women fighters. Please. My top five, starting with number one, Valentina Shevchenko. I have what? A... <laughs> <laughs> I have Amanda Nunes coming in at number two, Rose Namajunas at number three, Zhang Wei Li number four. And I put you on a Yunjenchik. She was not on that list only because of inactivity, in my opinion. Is when it you... only because of inactivity though? I know she's she's had some bumps in the road, but when you look at what she did in terms of being a strawweight she? champion, she's got to be on yeah. that list. And it's she's not on there because she hasn't fought in a couple of years, and they take people out of the rankings. You yeah. can't be in rankings if you're not fighting. Yeah, but she's fighting tomorrow. She's on the but roster, guys. Ranking. She's fighting tomorrow. She's active. She's fighting. She's right. pound for pound. Can you get to the the real my the best pound for pound list? Here's mine. 
All right, number five. <laughs> we'll start at number five is Rose, right? Because oh, I Rose, like this. You're gonna yeah. create some suspense. Yeah, because Rose was she lost to I'm Carla twice. So how do you put how do you put Carla behind Rose when she's two and zero against her? So I got Carla at four. I got Amanda Nunes at three because Juliana Pena beat her. They've only competed one time. Juliana Pena is number two. Number one, Valentina Shevchenko. There's no suspense. That's the right. See it on the screen. That is the right list. Valentina, Juliana, Amanda, Carla, and Rose Namajunas. Right, I like what you've got there, but I'm going to raise you what I've got. Okay. You ready? What am I, invisible, I John? Like, I also, well, am I'm I invisible? Just, hey, listen, I'm just taking orders off of the man as well. Let's you know go, John. I mean? Let's All go, right. John. Okay, I like John, what you did this, though, five to one. Yeah, I like what you did. In at number five, Carla Esparza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was the first <laughs> as yep. well. Yep. Yep. She's first Come back around, I like it. Two-time champ. And after her last victory, Juliana Pena at four. In at three, Rose Namajunas. Number two, Amanda Nunes. And at number one, Valentina Shevchenko. I just think it's a little less clear that Amanda's number myself. two after what happened in the last fight. Because everybody's got her at two. Like, no. It, it, not yeah, everybody. You're, you're allowed to have a bad day at the office. Exactly. And not everybody. You doesn't eradicate your body of work. Done. We were that, literally uh, calling yeah, her the greatest martial artist in no, the history No, she's the greatest of all May, time. But I'm saying, we're talking about Bonk today. She's got to show me in the rematch that she still... Fight fans have memories like goldfish. It's like, what was your last fight? I'm Obviously. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> you went one to five. You went five to one. I'm going to go start with three, just for fun. <laughs> okay. Good on Rose you. Rose <laughs> Namajunas. You won it twice. You won it twice. Uh, let's go number two. You really two. are starting with three. You were just, I thought you were Valentina talking. Shevchenko. Number five. <laughs> None of you guys brought up Jessica Andrade. That's so ridiculous. She will knock you out with one punch so, to the head, uh, knock you out with a punch to the body, doing it guillotine you, and slam your head through the canvas, take your belt, and run around with her awesome headdress on in three weight classes. Yeah, 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 the right. disrespect right. for this right. girl. You're right, RJ. You're right. Everything Where was I? I'm even too upset. Amanda Nunes, you don't lose like being the second best women's pound for pound fighter of all time. You don't lose that title with one loss. She's still number one Correct. currently. I don't know about no. I don't know about number one. But listen, we're just gonna say it like this: out of all us here, who's the most intelligent person? I would say it's Laura Sanko. Thank you, Mike. Right? Would you say it's Laura? Thank you, Mike, for so Where was he going with it? Well, hold on. This is, this is exactly the same. And she's got the exact same list as me. And we just the general consensus said Laura is there, the smartest. And I mean. I guess I'm the smartest as well because we got the same list. Yes, yes, don't Laura, don't fall for this. Don't fall for this with the way he's been acting the whole show. Smart. I think no it just means we know who Biz being copied his homework. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he he did. called me dumb like five minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So don't, big, don't, big, don't fall for this, Laura. It's a give and a take. It is. The way he's been acting this whole show. Don't forget it. Michael, what makes Valentina so great? I mean, where do you start? I mean, she has no weak area. She's absolutely sensational. The mind. Uh, yes, she lost to Nunes, and that would be the obvious uh, counter, in my opinion. Size right? thing, though, right? Size. Well, well, no, yeah. of course, my question. Um, <laughs> yes, she lost her twice, but they were very, very close fights. And the question is pound for pound. She went up to 135. Her optimal weight class is 125. I think, therefore, you can make the argument that if they were the both, both the same size, which is the pound for pound argument, that Valentina would be the better one. However, you know, it's so close. It is so close. And she's the champ right now. Amanda's not. Her greatest weapon is her mind. You think of like MMA, like women's MMA pioneers, you know, like you know, Misha Tate. Valentina's fought longer than almost all of them. She's been yeah, fighting yeah. forever. Very, very smart fighter. That's her biggest asset. And I, I'll, I'll be the one to say it. I'll be the jerk. Wants what happened? Part, part of the team so, so bad. bad. <laughs> you need you need 19 more O's on that so. He wants to be a part of the team more team accurate. So bad, isn't he? I, you, we I can't keep this guy behind I the camera. I can't see the the writing's too small for me. Well, we can't possibly. I've already got my ass groove in this chair. We can't so even can't keep him behind else. the camera. Like every yeah, show, we're trying to keep him behind the camera. Up. He pops up somehow. Here's can I get some makeup, please? A little shiny, Chris. No? He did it at the old place as well before ESPN. He managed to squirm his way in there. <laughs> Stealing your shine every step of the way. We're going to move this one along to the <laughs> Joanna Yunjacek and Zhang Wei Lee fight. We're going to put up a little graphic for us. Analyze this one. Look at that. Though. That's some count of significant strikes, right? 186 for JJ. 165. Is this the last fight? For Zhang Wei Lee. Yeah, it's both, the first fight. Yeah, both 96. Leg kicks, look at that, 58 apiece on I know, the head. And 96 well. apiece on the head is wild. But it was the takedown, you know, one of eight, she secured yeah, but, a takedown. Body strikes for JJ, she doesn't discriminate with her target areas as well. But, okay, so we have volume. 
And apparently Zhang Weili's been working on her strength and conditioning to increase that power. Well, she's that, the best athlete on planet Earth. Well, wow. yeah. So you said, yeah. Is, Is that, that on the key, though? Earth? Listen, listen to me. When she can throw a basketball. I said it yesterday, right? So <laughs> she can spin a wheel. So listen to this, though. What, this is what Michael is like. Michael's like, you have to do that now. Because you spy oh, wheel. That's oh, the yeah, rules. Does. Oh, shocker again. Uh, oh, yeah. What was it? A Valentina dance. You oh. know how to do it. I'm watch your, well watch those knees. Is this my win that's being played out right now? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Uh, what is that? Michael Bisbee. Yes, you know, for Mike. me, for this, I be actually... number one on the fight now. The uh, thing is, I know something <laughs> about later on in the show, which is just, uh, just going to hurt me real bad. Anyway, sorry, you were saying, DC. What I was saying is, um, you don't know this what guy, you're saying. This guy right here. Talking <laughs> <Zhang laughs> <Wei Li. laughs> about strength. Zhang Wei Li, right? In terms of athleticism, she's second to none. And I'm being honest. Uh, her ability to adjust and do just about everything inside of the octagon has what, is what has made her special and what allowed for her to go on such a long winning streak. Now, she has struggled a little bit. And, and I'm saying struggled, but she's lost two title fights. One was razor thin in Madison Square Garden. But that was after going to war with Joanna Jan Jacek. Guys, there is always, you pay a cost in having those types of fights. I understand she defended the belt, she had the belt, but you pay a cost. How does she handle being back in there with that same person? And I'm looking at that graphic and it said one of eight takedowns. There were a number of times where she caught kicks and knocked her down and just didn't follow up. So. They're counting those as missed takedowns. Mm. It's a close fight. Mm. I don't know about you, but I feel like in this fight, she is really going to push the wrestling a lot more. Well, and I think the fact that she did not opt for the five-round fight tells me that she's going to look to grapple in this, in this particular fight. She wanted it to be three rounds. She wanted it to be shorter so that she could use that physicality and lean on the wrestling more than she did the first time. DC's got a fair point. The wear and tear, the wars for Zhang Weili. But look at Yuan Yan Jacek as well. It's a long time ago since she was a strawweight queen. She's also been through the same wars. She also lost to Rose Namajunas twice. She got knocked out, was it twice or one knocked time? Knocked out once. Knocked out once. Yeah. Decision once. Got beaten by Zhang, lost to Valentina, you know, so that all plays a psychological factor in terms of you, your momentum, your confidence stepping into the octagon. When you're undefeated, when you're beating everybody, you know, you think, I can beat everybody. You when like, when you start, invincible. when things, the defences get chipped away at, cracks start to appear, and it affects this thing, and this thing is the most important muscle, you know, and Valentina, sorry, Zhang may be the, the best athlete ever created yeah. by God, Yeah. Well, you know. Go play, but, go play basketball with Zhang Weili. Go run with Zhang Weili on the I track. She beat you in everything. She beat you in every single thing. I'm a very is. clumsy person. But but, but he talked yes. about the mind. We just running, spoke about running, Valentina and things, her mind. Yeah, we got a few things to fit in the show. We, we, we got to move on to no, the I'm saying, I'm saying she would, would be more event. athletic than me. I suck. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind saying that. Two men in our main events. Good. This is an ominous presence coming to you from the Czech Republic. This man is so unusual, so unorthodox. He can get the job done everywhere. Every day I'm a star in the city. Walk the streets like a wanted man. He's a great fighter. His style is unique. Jeez. This dude is serious. His weird kicks. And a high kick. Oh, he's wobbled. He's spinning elbow. Spinning elbow! Puts him face first! Glover Teixeira is a freak of nature. But in the ground, can't do much. He's getting better! He's somehow under there at 40 plus years old. The young samurai challenges the decorated king in Singapore. And to the victor goes the UFC light heavyweight crown. He's coming here to take over. This is what I work for all my career. Two fights and then he fights with about quite a rise. For the title shot, that will be my night. Oh my goodness. I'm the champ of the world right now. He continues to evolve at 42. The undisputed best of the world at 205 pounds. This is my era. Okay, so I... I never thought I'd be in the octagon surrounded by balloons, but we're going to play a little clip so that we all know what's going on. The balloon game. Let's okay. simplify it, call it that. Now, Michael, because you are the holder of this wonderful belt. I'm not the holder of this belt, I'm the champ. You're the champ, because you're... <laughs> okay, get it right, John. Yep, sorry. 
<laughs> Michael, because you are the champ, <laughs> you get to choose who goes first. Now, this is a winner stays on competition, so think very winner carefully. Stays on. You will go last. You will go last, which gives you well, that's a good. Thing. That is a good thing. So you've got to choose yeah. who goes first, and we've got to keep these. How, like, I don't even know how many balloons we've got to keep up in the You're air. You're going to keep those. them all up in the air, or, or one at a time? Yes. We, I mean, is it just one? Video. I'll be happy to explain. Yeah, okay. please. So it's one on one, and the game is simple. We all played it as little kids with our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> yeah. You just got to keep the balloon up. All yeah. of and them. I, no, just one at a time. Oh. So I go, and then the other guy goes, and then I go. So I'm trying to make it so the other guy oh, doesn't get it. Oh, that wasn't how I had it. Oh. But you can't go down. Ah, so, ah, you, have to, you have to always ah, have like an, an angle. Across. You go down or it goes out, you lose. And also Makes we got sense. very dangerous obstacles I was going to say, that's it. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so you've got to choose. To play. DC okay. versus Laura. Okay. I still don't okay. understand the game. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead, RJ. Just job. keeping, so keeping just the ball. So, so keeping the balloon, balloon up. But we've got one balloon. balloon. Okay. okay. It's very simple. Keeping it up. Right. You'll you start. Speak? You hit it up no, in no, the air. No, no. They said throw it up like the NBA. Oh. I'm a basketball player. And then it's back and forth, right? It's so back then you forth. hit it, and then you it have to hit it. Down. Okay. And just can't hit the floor. Can't go out. No foul play. No foul play either. Is that a cheating? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch the obstacles. What are you gonna do? Just one hit each. Oh, I see. You can knock it away. Oh, These stools are. Hazardous. If it goes out of the octagon, you're out as well. The stools are hazardous. Oh! 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 That was a bit a of a downward there. That was a downward there. That was a downward there. But it was good? Are we getting... It was legal. It was legal. It, it, was, it, was, it, legal. Legal. it was legal. It was legal. It was legal. Oh, my New York goodness. called in. All right. John Good didn't get in. I would like so, to make an announcement. Like. I just beat DC in an athletic competition. That's nonsense. Wait, that was oh, bounce. No, John, turn sideways. No, that's not how the NBA does it. Turn... Oh, wow. That oh, is what a gimme. Look, that she's doing it again. <laughs> oh, oh, she got him, she got him! Uh, oh, no! Uh, get him, Lord, get him! Uh, oh, that, that looked like a downward. I, I, no, that was not down. That was that not was down. Up. That was up. She hit it up. She hit it up. Good and did not make it. Thank you. Bent my finger back. What do you mean? Can I get a replay? I, I hit it up. Look at the, look at the She hit it up. Finger. Her hand went right. up. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it, but your, your finger kept the English on it. Touch the ball going into upward action. I got a scream. Well, girl. That upward should action. be your point, Barb. <laughs> I do believe that should be your point. Can I get a ruling? From New York. Instant replay. This is legal. It's legal. It's a good shot. What does that Let's mean? Go. Let's go. So that means Let's the go. final. No. Oh boy. Because she went. Michael Bisping. Laura Sanko. Well done. He's I've fast. heard enough from you, DC. Thank you very much. Oh. You were appealing for that one. Look at the marbles. Thing. Wait, stop, stop. Laura, Laura, hit it to the. Uh, <laughs> Laura, hit it. Hit it, Laura, hit it. He can't run, Laura. There's no way he beat you. No, Laura. Look, he's in a shadow. Look how tight oh. Michael is. Oh, oh look, don't worry about a stool. Watch your feet. Oh, oh. That, was oh. That, was that was down. 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 That was replay, down. Replay, down. replay again. Down. Taking a replay. Take that another look. Absolutely down. down. No knees. No Let's neck. Take a look. One eye. Let's look at it in New York. That was down. down. Every single one of them. That was down. The most athletic guy on planet Earth. That was a downward, downward, trajectory. downward trajectory. He's out. Laura, what? You are the oh, champion. Go again. I am. That's you are bullshit. The champion. Laura, Laura, <laughs> Laura. Is that it? I think they're taking another one. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, to be fair, he clearly hit it down before. Laura wins. There it is. Where's the belt? Where's the belt? Where's the belt? Well Thank you very well much. Done. Laura Seiko. Big done, win Laura. in the octagon. Yeah. Yeah. Fair and square. Took down the whole field. There we go. Laura Seiko with the title. Hey, because that dude, hey, he's stuff. been ridiculous well done, all day. That's why he's he been ridiculous. He has. I was happy we'll, to see him lose. Before we oh, break this nice. place. <laughs> okay, we're saying goodbye now. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Way hey, and Show. It all got underway. Great on the stage, right not so good in this the studio. This is where you would sing your time against me. I will make you go. The whole time. 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 Look at that. Look at that. Come here, Ben. Bring it up. You don't get so cool.